Hello everyone, in today's video, we will be building a full stack social media app from scratch with React, Firebase, and Chakra UI. Our app will have all of the most robust features of a full stack application like form validation and client side routing. We will also implement authentication with Firebase Auth to log users in, and we will also use Cloud Firestore as our database backend and also cloud storage in Firebase for users to upload their profile pictures. You can create posts and you can like posts and write comments on posts in our application. You can also delete comments and you can delete posts as well. And you can also view all of the user profiles in our app. Finally, we'll build functionality to upload profile pictures to cloud storage And once we're done, we can also choose to log out from our application. So this is how our backend Firebase console looks like. We're going to have authentication, which is managed by Firebase, and we have all of our users' profiles here. And then we're going to have our Firestore database to store three collections, one for the comments, one for the posts, and one for all of the user profiles. And then we're going to have storage here to store the avatar files for every one of our users. And by the end of this video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy your fully functioning web application to an online hosting service. And uh, we're going to deploy our app to Hostinger. Hostinger has very kindly offered to sponsor this video. And I've been using Hostinger for quite a while now. And I have to say that I'm really impressed with Hostinger's H panel. So H panel is basically Hostinger's hosting control panel. And that's what you're seeing here. And in case you haven't realized my demo app that I was showing you earlier is hosted completely in Hostinger's H panel. Hostinger's premium web hosting package also comes with a free domain name which I'm using right here to deploy my demo app. Oh and have you noticed that sweet small little lock there in the top corner that indicates we have an HTTPS connection to my demo site? That's because Hostinger has automatically installed an SSL certificate in my demo site for me and I never had to touch this it just does it automatically and it expires at that's right, never. That means I never have to worry about this and it just does it automatically. Just yesterday, I tried out their customer support and I was able to talk to an actual human and not just some auto-reply chatbot just in within minutes. So if you ever need web hosting solutions with free daily or weekly backups, go to hostinger.com slash ravenjs and you can get 10% off all deals. And if you're fast enough, Hostinger is having this special Black Friday deal that you can get on top of the 10% off if you use my Hostinger link. All you have to do is just click claim deal, just add that to cart. I recommend getting the 48 months plan because you save the most with this plan. And just go all the way down here and fill in all your payment details here and remember to use the coupon code RAVENJS and just hit apply and that way you can get 10% off on top of any special deals that Hostinger is currently having. So to start building our application, I'm going to make a new folder called Social Media App and I'm going to take that and drag it to Terminal so I can run yarn create react app and then dot. So dot basically just means create a React application in this current directory. And I'm going to hit enter and let that run for a bit here. With our app now created, I can just drag the folder to VS Code to open it in VS Code. And let's get rid of some of the files in the source directory here. So I always go and get rid of all of these um, files here that I don't need and just delete that. And then we have to go to our app, get rid of that, uh, and all of this. I'll just return an empty string for now. And I like, I like to always make this in one line. So export default function app. Uh, right, and then in index, we're going to get rid of um, basically all of this except for app. And so that, and report web vitals. All right, and now before I start the server with yarn start, I always go and make a .env.local file and set browser equals to none. The reason for that is because I have to do yarn start every time I make a big change, like every time I install a new package, and I have to keep restarting the server and just keeps opening a new browser tab in my browser, and I don't want that. So I just set browser equals to none, and I can just do yarn start, and it won't start a new browser tab every time I restart the server. 
Chakra UI is going to be the main component library that I'm going to be using for this project just because Chakra UI I find it to be uh, the easiest to set up and the least configuration required for the best looking components. So I'm just going to copy this line here to install Chakra from Chakra's get, Getting Started website and just go to Terminal and paste that line in. And then at the same time, we have to go and add the Chakra provider to our root application in our React app. So I'm just going to import, see how they do it, import Chakra provider. So let's import Chakra provider from, usually it has autocomplete to help me import this in VS Code, but because Chakra UI is installing right now, so I have to just do this manually for now. And then let's just Chakra provider here and just wrap the app component inside of Chakra provider. It's having issues resolving the package, so I'm just going to fix that. All right, and that's done installing. So I'm just going to say right off the bat, you don't have to be very well versed in Chakra UI to be able to follow along with this tutorial. But if at any point in time you run into anything, anything that you don't understand about Chakra UI that I'm doing, you can just go to the Chakra docs and just like, let's say you don't understand how, how the button component works. So just search up button, and just see how the implementation is like in the website's documentation. And hopefully that'll give you a better idea of what I'm doing in the tutorial. And with Chakra UI installed, there's just two more things we have to set up, and that is React Router. So if you look at our demo app here, you can see that we have different routes. I can go to all users, it will change to slash users. If I go to home, it's dashboard. And to do that, we have to handle all of the routes with this library called React Router. So I'm just going to do yarn, add react-router-dom, and just let that install. With React Router DOM now installed, I just realized that I have put this chakra provider wrapper in the wrong file. I actually intended to do that in app.js, so I'm just going to move that over here real quick. I'm just going to add the chakra provider here, just get rid of that from index.js. It actually doesn't matter, but just best practice, and I just prefer to have it in my app.js file and just leave the index.js file as clean as it can be. Now let's go ahead and make our very first route using React Router. So first, we are going to have to make our router component here and that is going to be in our app.js file. I'm going to just do router provider and then it's a self-closing tag and we have to import that from React Router DOM and then we have to pass in a prop called router and this is our router configuration object that we're going to have to give it to React Router in order to process our routes. So I'm not going to make this router config object within app.js and instead I'm going to make a new folder in our source folder called lib and let's make this route.js file. You know what, maybe routes.js. And then here, we're just going to make a router, a router object and just pass it in here. So let's go ahead and do const router, and let's export this equals to an object. And then here, let's just make that import statement. So import router. So here, what you can do is import that from dot slash library slash routes. But I don't like the dot slash uh, conventions here. And by the time we get more and more nested routes, we're going to be seeing stuff like dot dot slash dot slash dot slash and a bunch of that. So that's a problem with relative imports. And that's why I'm going to just, uh, just install absolute imports right from the get go. So I'm just going to go to this medium article here to install um, absolute imports. Then we can just do like import router from and then lib slash routes without the dot dot slash. So just copy that and go to our uh, j, uh, dot js config file here and just paste this in here. Um, no, it's js config dot json. And now we save that and we can just do import router from lib slash routes. So this is very useful down the, down the road when we start to have more nested routes and I just prefer to have it done from the start so we don't have to uh, refactor our import statements later on. And if you're using TypeScript, there's a different config here. You save it in tsconfig.json instead of jsconfig.json and you just paste this thing inside of your tsconfig file. So now we have that. We can go to our routes.js here and make our uh, router. So I'm just going to do create browser router here and port that from React Router DOM. And here is going to be our, it's going to be a list of all of the different routes and each route is going to be an object inside of this list. So let's make our very first route. I'm going to make a constant to store the, the, the URL. So export const, let's call this root equals to just, just a slash. So that's our root. And then here in this object, this is our, our very first object in this list. I'm going to make the path 
uh, called root and then we're going to have an element so this is ideally going to be a react element we can just uh, i'm just going to use a string here that says public root just to show you what this does and this has this usually this will be like a react component like like root or something but because i don't have any components yet i'm just going to use a string so let's do that and then i can just zero and start and so we can start the server let's go over to our browser let's just refresh this i'm going to just inspect and open up the console those words are really small i'm just going to zoom in and let's refresh this see if we see public root there we go while we're at it let's just go and add a few more routes here to our browser router so i'm just going to add two more and let's go and uh, export const the reason i'm exporting this these constants is because when we're referring to paths within our components within our uh, app we don't want to hard code the component the path in each of the individual components and instead we'll usually want to ref reference the constants here that that were exported from this routes.js file so that whenever we change we make a change to routes we don't have to go through each of the components and just look and look for all of the different references we just update this in one place in the constants file and just work throughout the entire program so I'm gonna make a login path here slash login as well as um, a register so register and register and then here we can have our path be login and also register now instead of just doing public root I'm gonna make a component folder components and let's make a subfolder here called auth and in this auth folder I'm gonna make two components uh, login .js as well as register.js and let's just uh, make re empty functions here first so react functional component just do that let's save and then here instead of just using the string as the element we can actually use the login component that we just made so you see that now I can just import login from components slash auth slash login I don't have I don't have to do like dot slash components uh, or whatever so that's like the, the why you would use absolute imports in a react and here in register I'm just um, register there we go and then now if we go to our browser and we do slash login it says login and if we do register it says register great now that's done let's actually go and write some code for our login form in our login.js file so i'm just going to close the rest of the files that we don't need here so in login here i'm just going to get rid of that import react because we don't need that in the newer react versions i'm just going to return so there's this running joke in the web development community that the hardest thing you're ever going to do is center a div as a web developer but that's not true now with chakra ui because chakra has this component called center that we can just use to center our uh, components I'm gonna give the center 100% uh, width, and I'm also gonna give it 100% view height. And then in this center component, I'm gonna make a box. So if you don't know what any of these components are, you can just, as always, just go to the Chakra UI documentation and just uh, look at the component specifications in the documentation. So like if I go to box here, you can see what you can do with the box. You can change the background color of the box, and you can add the padding, you can set the color. So I'm just gonna go back to our code here and let's continue with our box. I'm gonna give our box a margin X of one. I'm gonna give it a max width of MD. So this this will kind of act as our container. It will not let the width go more than the medium breakpoint. So in Chakra UI, there are these things called called breakpoints, and there there's like XS, and then there's small, and then there's medium, large, and then extra large, and then there's it's the second level of extra large all right I'm also gonna give this box a padding of nine uh, nine units and I'm gonna give the border one pixel in thickness and also I'm gonna make this border slightly rounded by giving it a large radius and then here inside of this box I'm gonna add a heading here from chakra UI and just say call it log in so um, we are going to give our heading a margin bottom of 4. This is for the input fields below this heading. We want to add some space between the, sped the, the heading and the input fields below. I'm going to set the size of this heading to be large. And then let's do text align. Let's center this heading as well. So 
align equals to center. Let's see how this looks like in the browser. So if I go to slash login, we should see our box. You can see the border is of, of one pixel and it's slightly rounded. And then we have our heading and then our padding, our margin of four below the heading. And next for the input fields, we can always go and like make an input like that and then just like, uh, just an input like that and then it'll show up like that but I'm not gonna do that and I'm instead gonna wrap all of this in a, a form here like so and the reason for doing that is because if you're using forms we can we can e we can just use the enter we can just fill up these fields here and just hit enter and it's gonna log in without the form component you'll have to explicitly click on the login button and trigger the on click the on click listener in react to be able to submit the form so hitting enter won't uh, submit the form and that's why we have to use our uh, form element here instead of just using react control inputs and also using i'm going to use a library called react hooked form which will help us uh, write form validation so like if I get rid of this back part and I just hit enter now you can see that we have like form validation it tells you that email address is not valid and just having react hook form simplifies that process but before we install and implement react hook form let's just go and build out the basic UI components first in the form so I'm just gonna leave the on submit call here empty I'm just gonna like on submit equals to like a blank function a blank arrow function here so it does nothing right now the form doesn't submit and then i'm gonna so the way you make forms in chakra ui is you can have form control components like form control and this component we have like form label and then we have our inputs here right so i have github copilot installed and just it just prompts me the right thing to fill fill up in the code so i have a type of email here and the placeholder is email and then here in the form, the form control, I'm gonna just gonna demonstrate how to use form validation. So there's a prop in Chakra UI's form control component called is invalid, and I'm just gonna hard code this to be true, just to show you how it looks like if there is there is indeed an error. I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna add some spacing. I'm just gonna add two two units of padding in the y direction, which means top and bottom. The form label, you can just make this email. And here we have our placeholder. We can have like email, like user at email.com. And then here, I'm gonna just add a form. You know what, before I do anything, let me just show you how this looks like in the browser. So it looks like this for now. And you can see that the, the email input is highlighted in red. And that's because I have my is invalid equals to true here. And that's why it's red. If I have this false, it's not gonna be red. So let's leave, let's leave this true. And I'm also gonna get like, I'm gonna put form error message here from Chakra UI. And we can say, this is an error message. Let's see how that looks like. So there, that's how you make errors in our Chakra UI form. I'm gonna come back here and just take this and do the same thing, but for a password. So let's change this to password and um, type. Let's change this to password. And then we can change this to um, password123. Let's see how this looks like. And here, password. All right. So that's nice. And lastly, let's go ahead and work on our submit button. So I'm going to go below the form control for the password field and add a button from Chakra UI. And this button's going to say log in. And let's, let's style this a bit. Let's give it some spacing on the top let's give it a margin top of four this type has to be submit and the color scheme i'm just gonna give it like teal maybe i'll just change the entire project's color scheme to teal instead of the purple in our example we can give this size of medium and then the width so i'm just i'm just gonna see how that looks like so you can see it's like on the left so we can give it a width of full and it'll just take up the entire uh, space and uh, in the, the Chakra UI button has a few pr useful props like is loading and we can just set this to true just to see what it looks like and then you can see it's, it's spinning and loading and we can also give it a loading text logging in that, and that looks good if we add three dots it'll look 
nah, without the three dots. All right. What we can do next is add that register link. Don't have an account, register instead link here down at the bottom. So if I go back to login, and you can see that line of text, don't have an account, register instead. So let's add that. So how how we're gonna do it is we're gonna use this component from React Router called, called link. So the link from React Router DOM, and we can just go and add that under our form component link and just uh, register. So link, register, and then that's a clickable link, and we can add the prop for two. And we can always just like to do two slash register, but as I mentioned previously, we don't we don't want to hard code the routes in our components because sometimes you want to change change the routes a bit, and we don't want to have to go through and go through every single one of the nested files to look for the links. So instead, I'm just gonna import this register constant. Uh, so two register and here it's going to import from the library so you can see the benefits of using absolute imports very clearly now instead of using dot dot slash um, dot slash uh, library routes we can just do library slash routes because the absolute uh, location would be in the source directory so we don't have to do any dot, dot slashes and relative imports so now i'm going to link to register if i save that I can just click on register, it's going to bring us to the slash register page. But one thing you're going to notice is that um, we can't style this very well. Like we could always style it with the React style uh, prop using style, just like text uh, or font, font weight, make it bold, and we can style it like that. But we already have check UI in our UI components. So instead of just using the style props in, from React, I'm going to import the link component from check UI. Here you can see we have our link component that has some of the styles that we can use. And of course, we can pass in more styles of our own into the check UI's component, like, um, like color. Because if you do color here on the link component that's provided to us by React Router, you, you can't do just color equals to blue. It doesn't work, see? So now let's go and import the link component from check UI. And now it's going to clash because we have two different link imports. So let's just change the link from React Router to router link. So link as router link. And here this link component is going to be the check UI's link component. And now if I add color equals to teal, you can see that actually works. I can change the weight, I can change the color weight to 800 and then make it darker and then we can also go and do font weight to medium then we can add our, our underline so let's do text decor equals to underline and they'll make it underlined and then so now the thing I'm going to do next is make it so that there's a highlight so we can see it highlights the background when I have hover so I'm going to do hover this is a check or UI thing. I can change the, the background to purp uh, not purple, teal, 100. So hover, it gets highlighted. All right, that's nice. I'm also going to just add a some margin on the top. Margin top equals to 6, so it doesn't stick to the button. Um, you know what? No, let's add the margin to a parent component called text which we're going to import from Chaco UI because I want to be able to type our other things that are in the link here. For instance, I want to write like don't have an account space and then here we can have font size of extra large, align this to be center and give it a margin top here in the te text instead. So here we have our don't have an account prompt. Register instead. Let's write instead here. Instead, there we go. And there's it's going to be stuck together. So we have to add um, some space like that. There we go. But now one thing you're going to notice is that clicking this register link doesn't do anything anymore because um, it's just we have to use the, the router link component from React Router DOM to be able to actually make a functional link. So the chakras link is just for styles, and for functionality, we're gonna make this link uh, 
render as a router link and then Chakra is going to style this link and then it's going to implement the functionality of the Chakra, uh, the, the React router link. So save that. If I click on register instead, you can see it brings us to the register page and it works. But before we make our login form work with functionality, I'm first going to want to make our dashboard component and our dashboard route because if we don't have our dashboard, the login form doesn't know where to go next. We're just going to log in and we're not going to be able to tell if we're logged in or not. So I'm going to go to our components and make another dashboard folder here and make an index.js and make a React functional component. And then here, Let's name that dashboard, uh, and here, let's just call it dashboard, all right? And then here, we're going to add that to our routes. We have to make export const dashboard equals to, all right? We can, we can always just do slash dashboard, but the thing is, I only want the dashboard to be accessible by users who are already authorized and, and logged in. I don't want just anyone to be able to go to the dashboard, because I don't want... I don't want users that are not signed in to be able to go to the dashboard. So I'm just going to make it protected and add like slash protected to it. So basically how this works is if you go to our, uh, let's, let's go to our demo page here, right? So let's say I have protected slash dashboard. And if we go there, it's going to, it's going to kick me back to the login page. See, cause I'm not logged in. If I go to like protected slash, um, profile slash whatever the profile is, and hit enter it's gonna kick us back it's always gonna bring us back to the login page because we're not logged in but if we are logged in in this for instance in this tab I can hit enter it's not gonna kick us back to the login page because uh, although we're in the protected path we're we're logged in so we just have to make the logic to check for the protected routes for that let's make a protected route and then the way we implement that is we go to react router here Let's make another path we call this protected and the element here is going to be our layout element which we're going to have to check we are going to have to make in our components folder and then we can pass in children children to this uh, path of protected and then we can it, this this is going to be another list of objects and all, these objects in here are going to be the protected slash whatever path so protected slash dashboard or protected slash posts users profiles whatever all right, so here layout's gonna be uh, we let's just let's just put this as a string for now. So this is a string, and then children let's just leave that let's just leave that empty. And then I'm gonna go to my app here. We can do, go and look at protected, and then you can see this is a string. I can do slash protected slash whatever. It's not gonna exist because we don't have that route. If I do protect dashboard, we cannot we're not gonna have that route. So let's go and make that here. We can make our path. Let's make it dashboard and then the element is going to be our dashboard element. And then if I go to protected slash dashboard, you can see that it doesn't give us an error anymore. But you're going to know this, that it's not going to say dashboard. Instead, it still says this is a string. And that's because in order to make a layout component, we need to go and like, we need to use this outlet component from the React Router library to be able to render children elements because this right now doesn't this com this this is essentially it's just a react component that doesn't that's just a string that just returns a string and it doesn't have a way to return the children uh, components so let us actually go to our components folder and make that layout component so layout and let's do index.js react functional component hello react functional component there we go layout and then here, if we do index, it's just going to keep returning index regardless of what the children is and what the sub path of it is. So instead of just doing uh, that, I'm going to use the outlet component from React Router DOM. So basically, the outlet component is how React Router knows to where to insert the children. If I say that this is the child, then we just do outlet here. And then I go to routes instead of the string, and I do layout. Right, and then dashboard is here, right? So if I go back, you can see this is the child, this is the child dashboard, and then I can make more children routes. I can make like a test, test, like just test, all right, and then test one. So if I go to slash test, you can see this is the child test one, and then if I make another child and let's do test two, and then 
uh, the element uh, test2. Then we can go to test2, and then you can see the child is test2. All right, now that we're familiar with that concept, we can come and get rid of all of the, uh, those children components there. And then what we're gonna do is go to the layout component and actually implement the functionality here instead of just writing, this is the child. So what, what we have to do is we have to go to our uh, path name and check if, it's, uh, if the path name starts with slash protected. And if it does, then we want to check if the user object exists, meaning if the user is logged in or not. And if they are, just render whatever child component there is in the outlet component. But if the user isn't logged in, then we have to redirect them back to the login page. So how are we going to do this? Let's go first check if the path name starts with protected and how we're going to do that is by using a hook that's provided to us by the react router dom library called use location so use location that's a hook and it returns a location to us and this location object has um, a path name path name property in that uh, object so instead of doing this what we could do is we could just take that path name and just destructure inside of the first line itself and that way we can save on one line but if you don't want to do that you can just do like location and you could always just console.log the location object to see whatever it's in that object so let's refresh this um, no routes here so let's just go to dashboard and you can see that we have an object here and it has a hash, a key, a path name, search, and state. So what we're interested in is the path name property. So uh, let's just go and do path path name. And then now if I refresh this, you can see the path name is a string that's, that's giving us the path slash protected slash dashboard. All right, now that we have the path name, we can use effect here from React. And then let's just get rid of the, con the console.log. And here it's going to take in an arrow function. And then here, let's just say if path name changes, then we want to run all of the code here and use effect. So let's do if path name dot starts with. So starts with is a JavaScript method that we can run on strings. And if it starts with protected, uh, let's just, all right, sure. Let's just console.log protected route for now. And let's go and refresh this. So we are in protected route. If I go to slash login, for example, then it won't say protected route. But if I do um, slash protected slash dashboard, then it says protected route. And instead of just logging this to the console, let's go the extra mile and let's just uh, redirect the user to the login page, no matter if they're logged in or not for now. So here we're going to use another hook that we can import from React Router DOM and it's called Navigate. So I'm going to do const navigate equals to use navigate. And using this navigate function here, we can navigate the user to our whatever the, the desired route is. So here it's going to be login. And we have to import that from our library, our constants. So library slash routes and login is a constant. And we're just going to navigate the user back there. So let's see if this works. So I can already see that it works because I'm back in the login page despite me leaving this on the protected dash dashboard route. So let's go back to the dashboard and you can see it just kicks us back to the login page. Let's try, let's try it again, all right? Protected slash dashboard. Okay, look, it just doesn't let us go to the dashboard, just kicks us back to the login. So everything's working as intended. To check if the user is actually logged in or not, we have to get our hands dirty now with some actual Firebase stuff. So to do that, we have to go and create our Firebase project in console.firebase.google.com. So I'm going to go and add a new project and we can call this whatever we want to. I'm going to just make it social media app. We can hit continue. We don't need Google Analytics. Let's just give it some time to buffer. And now that it's done, we can hit continue and it's going to bring us to our dashboard. And the first thing we want to do is make a web application by clicking on web. And then we can call this React app. And then we don't need Firebase hosting. We can just register the app. And it's going to make our very first web app connection. And then we have to add the Firebase SDK to our React application here. So it's going to tell us to install Firebase, which I am going to do. 
let's go to our console and just stop the server yarn at firebase so hit enter and then while while that's installing i'm just going to come here and copy all of the code here and we're going to go to our library folder and add a new file called firebase and just paste everything here so ideally you don't want to have all of your api keys and your project id and whatever in your source code so usually what you want to do is go to your env.local file and just put all of your things like react underscore app underscore firebase uh underscore app id whatever and equals to your app id but for simplicity's sake i'm not going to do that in this video if you want to do that you can just just do what i show you in the, the env file and then just do like app id and just uh process.env.react underscore app underscore whatever the name of your environment variable is and now that my firebase package is done installing i can restart the server and then here i'm just gonna get rid of all of the comments and then it's, we're going to import the SDKs for the Firebase products that we want to use in this project. So there are three products that we're going to use. One is the Firestore database we're going to use for our um, posts and our users, our user profile information and our comments and everything like that. And I'm going to use authentication for user authentication and storage for the files, the avatar files that users are going to upload to our app. So we can import get Firestore like that. And we also have to import get auth uh, from Firebase slash auth and then import get storage. And then once we have all of those SDKs imported, we can go and make our handles here. So I'm going to export this because we might have to use all of our handles uh, for our Firestore auth and storage um, SDKs. So I'm going to do that three times. This is just going to be um, const db. And then instead of initialize app here, I'm going to do um, get Firestore app. That's right. And then here, let's do auth. And then here, just get auth app. We also need one more. I'm just gonna clone that. And we need one more for the storage bucket. So let's do storage. And then it equals to get storage app. And now I'm gonna go to our Firebase console back here. And let's go to build and then authentication here we have to initialize we have to get started here and go and activate our email and password signing provider so let's go and click on this and you have to just enable that just toggle that and then just hit save and now we have that enabled and i'm going to go back to our layout component here so in the layout component we want the path name to start with protected and also and if the user object is not defined then we want to navigate the user back to login so the user object we have to get from our own hook. Ideally, what we want to do is we want to make a hook here. And the hook is going to be like use auth, right? It doesn't exist yet, our hook. I'm just going to write this here so you get an idea of what we're going to, we want to achieve here. So this use auth hook is going to be our custom React hook that we're going to write that's going to return us a user object and also an is loading prop that tells us if the user is being fetched because uh, fetching the user object from firebase is a is an asynchronous task which means that there's going to be a loading state and while this is loading we want to return early we're going to just like if is loading we just want to return loading and we don't we don't want to render the outlet we don't want to render the children component so we just want to return loading and we just want to cut everything off and this use effect hook is complaining to me and giving me some warnings and i think that's because i'm returning too early here i'm returning before the use effect hook uh, has time to declare so i'm just going to move the return statements down and save that and it's obviously not going to run yet because we don't have this use auth hook that we have to make so let's go ahead and make that i'm going to go to my source folder and make a hooks folder and let's just do auth so we're going to have hooks for posts hooks for users, hooks for comments and likes and stuff. And I'm just going to make a, a file called auth and we're going to have all of our auth related hooks. And let's just export those hooks. So export function use auth and return. Let's just return uh, just an empty user and then it's loading is false for now. And I'm going to just import use auth from hooks. While I'm back here, I'm also just going to add the user object in the use effects list here just to watch for the changes in the user object as well to run this code. 
and then I'm going to go and see how this looks like in the browser. So if I go to and refresh this, and I go to protected slash dashboard, it's gonna kick us back to login, right? But if I go to the hook here and I change user to be um, true, let's just make it a true object. Let's go back to protected dashboard. And you see it doesn't kick us back immediately back to the login screen because now user is defined and the program thinks we're logged in and that's why it's not kicking us back and it's rendering the child component of dashboard with the layout component. Now instead of just hard coding the user value to be true here, I actually want to make this so that it fetches the user object from Firebase. So how do we do that? I'm going to use this library called React Firebase Hooks which has just gives us a bunch of pre-built Firebase hooks that we can just use to get the user objects and um, to use stuff like Firebase storage and uh, Firestore, Cloud Firestore. So let's go ahead and install that library. Stop the server, yarn at react-firebase-hooks. And while that's adding, I'm gonna come here and uh, this is the React Firebase hooks documentation. You can see that tells us to import the use auth state a hook which we can just import so that's import use auth state and then here i am going to just copy this line and put it in our own hook here and instead of user i'm just going to change the name we can change name here because it's not it's not an object if it were to be like that then we wouldn't be able to change we have to we would have to do something like rename user the user property to auth user but because it's just a list so it, it, the only thing that differentiates the objects is the positioning the order so we, i can just name this auth user and then loading is loading and then error is just error all right and then here options if you look at the documentation you can see options uh here options is optional we don't need to specify the options so i'm just going to get rid of that the auth is going to be our auth instance, which is basically the Firebase auth handle that we exported from the Firebase file earlier. You see this auth object. So let's just import auth from library slash Firebase and pass it into the use auth state hook. And here, uh, let's just return the user to be auth user for now. And then is loading can just be is loading. Basic is just is loading is is loading, but because of ES6 syntax conventions, we can just do is loading and then It'll, it'll work the same way. I'm also gonna just pass error in to the ob the return object. And now if I save this, go to our React app, we go to our dashboard and we, oh, we first have to start our server. So yarn start and just wait for that to compile. And now that's running, I can go back to our website and let's try going to protected dashboard again and it's gonna kick us out again. So that's great. And now let us actually go and write the functionality for the login form. So ideally, let's go to the form. Uh, let's just close everything. And in the components, in our auth and login form here. So we are yet again gonna write another one of our custom hooks to handle the function, the login functionality. So it's gonna look something like this. We're gonna destructure a login function as well as an is loading indicator from our use login hook that we're gonna make. And we're gonna have to import that use login from um, hooks slash auth. And then I'm gonna go to hooks slash auth and let's export our function called use login. So it's gonna return, it's, it's gonna have a loading stage for one because we have to return Remember, we have to return, we're expecting a login function as well as an is loading state. So let's go and make is loading, set loading. And we're going to use state for that. False. And then we have to import use state. Can I just use auto import here? Yes, I can. And here I'm going to make a function. It's going to be a synchronous function login. And so here, let's take in some props. We're going to take in an email, a password, and then the third one is just going to be redirect to. Redirect to is going to be a prop that we can specify where to redirect the user to after the user is successfully logged in. And I'm just going to give it a default value of dashboard. So if we don't provide a redirect to property, it's still going to work. It's not going to crash. It's just going to do the default uh, behavior, which is just to redirect to the dashboard.
And then here, let's just start by setting the loading state to true. And at the end, we're going to just set loading to false after we're done with everything. And then Firebase has this function called await. It's called sign in with email and password. We can import, so sign in with email and password. Uh, it takes in auth, the auth handle, which we imported from li library slash Firebase, and then the email, which is from here, and the password. And you have to import that. So I guess we have to import sign in with email and password from Firebase slash auth. This is an API call, which means we have to await that. And then um, let's sometimes we're going to run into errors because what if the user tried signing in with a, a password that's wrong or a user tried signing in and he hasn't he doesn't have an account yet. So we have to use try catch to catch all of the errors. So we're going to try that. Right, and then we are going to catch an error. And then here, if there is if there's any errors, we're going to notify the user. And if we succeed in our login, we're also going to go and uh, notify the user. So how we're going to do that is by using Chakra UI's toast. So I'm going to go to Chakra UI's documentation here, and just to show you the toast component. So the toast component, if I hit show toast, you can see that the, we have these alerts that we can just open up with Chakra UI. And I'm just going to go back to the code here. To, to use toasts, we will get a toast handle and use the use toast hook from Firebase, from Chakra UI, sorry. And then here, if we succeed in uh, signing in, we're going to toast the user. And the title just um, says you are logged in and then oops and then the status success so they'll give us a green toast we can set is closable to true and then we set the position to top and all of these props by the way you can just look at the documentation in chakra ui to find like the variance and the status the, the closing toasts you can just go and look at the documentation I'm just gonna speed here and just uh, give it a duration of 5,000 milliseconds. So we're going to toast, and then after we're done toasting that, we can navigate our user. So navigate, remember how to navigate users. We have to use navigate. So const navigate equals to use navigate. Import that from a React router DOM. And then once we toast them that you're logged in, we're going to navigate them to the redirect to property. So by default, that's going to be dashboard. And then if we fail, let's just toast them and tell them that um, logging in failed. And then the status can be error. They'll give us a red toast. And then we can give it a description of error.message. So that's error, the error object that we're going to catch. It's going to give us a message property and it'll give us a more descriptive. Um, description of what happened. Like if the user failed, the, the password's wrong, or the user does, doesn't exist. And we can give is closable to be true, position top again, and then duration is 5000. And then after all of that, we're going to set loading to false. And then, uh, okay, so that should be pretty much everything that we have to do for our uh, login function. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and return false. Uh, so let's say return false if login failed and then if it succeeded we're gonna return true and then return true if login succeeded all right so now we can go to our login uh, our login component here and implement the functionality for this login hook so remember earlier when I was talking about react hook form and now we're actually gonna have to install that library and use the react hook forms hooks to uh, implement the functionality for a form and uh, t talk, like handle the on submit functions. So I'm going to stop the server and let's install. So yarn add react hook form. So we're going to add react hook form and then in react hook form there's this hook called use form. We're going to import use form from react hook form and then use form returns a bunch of s things that we can use and it's going to return a register function, which we're going to register 
we're going to use to register the individual fields in this form. So usually how how you would uh, how you would deal with forms in React is you would uh, you would make a value and then you set it to some like some state variable and then you do on change equals to whatever set set text and stuff, right? But using React poke form, we don't have to manually type out all of the um, set state and whatever other props that we have to pa manually pass into the inputs. And we could just use the spread operator and just do dot 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 register. And this register is coming from the use form hook. And register takes in the name of the field which we use to identify the specific input field. In this case, it's email. So we can just do email. And then we can also do the same for um, password. So I'm going to just use the spread operator again on register, which will return an object. And then we can um, just do password here. And we can save that. Another argument that we can pass into our register functions is the validation the validation functions. So in, in here, I'm just going to do email validate. And that's going to be a function that we're going to write in our uh, utils folder, which I'm going to create in a second. And password is going gonna, is gonna to have the password validate function as well. So I'm going to go and go to our source, source folder and make a folder called util, utils. <laughs> And then let's do uh, forum-validate.js. And I'm going to paste in a bunch of validation functions. So here you can see we have uh, email validate and we have password validate. And just this is basically just a regular expression, just regex. And you can very easily find regex patterns from the internet or just Google it. Or you can just use like GitHub Copilot's regex uh, suggestions <laughs> if you have GitHub Copilot, which makes it very useful. And then, the, and then basically you can just pass this validate, validation, validating function to the React Code form register function argument. Uh, we have to import that, of course. So let's import and I have to save this. And then here we can import, import the email validate as well as password validate. And if you want to customize these validation functions, you can just go and take a look at the validating functions yourself and you can change, you can customize the message, you can change uh, this message to something else and you can add more um, patterns or just modify the regex patterns if you know how to do reg regex in here. So with that, um, we can also get handle submit from the use from hook and that will just handle our submit for us. So handle submit because because usually when you submit a form in React, you'll have to do something like e dot um, prevent default to prevent the default behavior of form, form submissions, which is to refresh the page. But you don't have to worry about all of those details when you're using use form hook from React hook form. So handle submit will take in a sub like a, a function which we can just call it handle sign in, and we have to make this function up here. So uh, a sync function handle login actually you can just call it handle login to just to make things easier for us so handle login it's going to be a function and usually what it looks like is this um, handle submit uh, function is going to take in an arrow function and it's going to have like a data object that you can then pass into your handle login function which you can receive the data object from here but because uh, there's a shorter way of writing it you can just omit that part and it'll still work the same but pretty much that's just f uh, for your understanding we're going to receive this data object from the handle submit function from the use form hook which is from um, react hook form so in the data uh, object we're going to have all of the properties that um, we specified so we're going to have our email and we're going to have our password so before we do anything we can just console.log the data object uh, for your understanding so let's go and uh, it's gonna it can't resolve React. Hopefully, let's refresh this, and it's we're not gonna be able to submit this form because the button is um, perpetually loading. So let's go and fix that, and let's just comment that out. So um, test and then test here. It's enter. It's gonna tell us please include at. All right. So to do that, and then you can see here. When I hit enter, it's going to give us this in the console that says email. This is an object that has the email property and also uh, the password. So basically, that's how uh, React Hook Form works.
So we can use this data object and we can call the await login function, which we're getting from our use login hook. So remember that in our login hook, um, we're expecting an email and a password and redirect to is optional. So let us go and uh, give this login an object that has an email and email is basically just data.email and then password just data.password and then um, we can we can you know we can just do redirect to equals to dashboard uh, it's not going to do anything extra because we already have the default behavior here but this is just for us to to simplify our future developments when we want to come in and add this redirect to functionality in the future will be reminded that we can just do it straight from here this handle login function and we don't have to go and modify the login hook so we can do that and then we can uh, use reset basically reset is something we can get from the use form as well we can reset uh, no it's just it's just a function we can call the reset function here which will reset the entire form basically it will clear the forms uh, input fields so if I come here and type that and we'll hit login you can see it resets and the login toast uh, appears and that that's all working and that's really cool uh, the, the thing you're gonna know the, the thing you're gonna notice down the line is if we fill this up and and there's an error it's gonna reset and we don't really want that to happen we only want the form to reset if we uh, if it succeeded in logging in so uh, we have remember that in our auth and in our login hook, we return false if login failed and we return true if login succeeded. So we can just const succeeded equals the await login. And then if succeeded, then we reset the form. If not, we don't. So let's try this again. And we hit login. We hit login. Um, the dot is, we use the dot two times. All right. Uh, it's add whatever okay we hit enter and you can see there's an error and it doesn't uh, reset the form the next thing i'm going to fix is this perpetual error state that the form is in right now and um, that's because i have um, the is invalid here hard coded to be true in the form so how are we going to get the errors from the use form hook so basically uh, after a new react hook form update we have this new variable called form state that we can destructure to get the errors uh, variable here from use form and i can just console.log the errors variable to show you what what it is so if i come here you can see right now the errors uh, variable is an empty object because we haven't submitted the form yet but if i i give it an invalid email address so this is an invalid email address because i don't have the dot right and if I, I give a password that's too short, I click login, you can see that it prints out an object that has the property of email and password. So email, and email says email address is not valid, and password must at least be six characters long. So the, e the email object is basically referring to the email field, and the password is referring, referring to the password field. And how, we, how, do we different, how do we differentiate and set the names of these properties? And that's, uh, that's why we had our register our register function and the, the argument name there email so if we change this to like uh, a mail a mail and I refresh that you can see that it's gonna be I have to refresh this page and let's give it an invalid email an invalid password you can say you can see it changes to a mail so basically the you, how you know the names of the properties of the objects is by looking at the register functions that you have in your form. I'm going to change this back to email and I realize that the email address is not valid message has spelled has the word address spelled wrong. So I'm going to go to our form validate function here and fix that and change this to email address with, with two D's and we can refresh this. And if I give it an invalid email and invalid password, you can see that the email address is not valid, it's fixed. And if we fix this, you can see that now the email properly is gone from the error object and we just have the password that's left. And fix the password by giving it more than six characters. You can now see that the object is now empty because we don't have any errors left. So let's go and change our error messages here. So instead of giving this just error, we'll do errors dot um, email. And then here, this is errors dot um, password and then the in, we'll do the same for is invalid so I'm going to take this and put it here 
I'm gonna take this and put it here. Uh, all right, so if I go back to my browser, I should be able to refresh this and see that there's no errors right now. If I give it a, a, a wrong email and wrong password, I hit login. Uh, it's gonna give me this error, which is, the reason it's giving me this error is because if I, if we look at the email object here, you can see that this, this message is under the property with the name of message. And basically what I'm doing is I'm doing errors.password and errors.password is an entire object in and of itself. So this entire thing, this is the error.password object. So I don't want to be putting that into my children, my, like this position here as a React object because that's not a React object. That's uh, an actual JavaScript object. So I can make it a string by referencing the dot message property. And let's go and do the same for email. And that should fix it. So if I refresh this, so um, the message property is undefined, and that's because um, we don't. The message property isn't defined from the start. It's only defined if there if we submit the form and there are errors. So we can fix that by saying if errors dot email if that exists, um, then we're gonna render out the message. If not, it's just gonna not render anything. So errors dot password. And then let's refresh this and fingers crossed it's gonna work this time. So let's do that. Let's hit login and it works. All right. So our login form should be fully functional at this point. If I do test user at gmail.com and give it a random password and try to log in, it's gonna load for a bit and it should give me an error here that says uh, error auth slash user not found. And we realized realize that the login button keeps loading and that's, um, we have to fix that because we wouldn't be able to try again if that happens. So it's going to be in the hooks here and it's going to be set loading to fall. It's going to be okay. So we have to clone this and put it um, before the return statement because this return statement cuts this uh, functions off, cuts this function off from uh, running that line, which is set loading false. Um, Okay, so let's refresh and test you user at gmail.com, uh, some password, and there we go. But I want to see the form in action before I actually complete the functionality for the re register form. So I can go over to my dashboard here and just manually create a user. So let's add a user, test user at gmail.com and give it a password that's really strong. So password123, just add the user here. And let's put the let's just try to log in. It's gonna tell us um, wrong password, which is a better error in the in the sense that uh, this error now exists. We just don't know the password. So I'm gonna put the password in here and click login. And we're gonna <laughs> what is this error? Okay, it's gonna tell us that we're logged in, which is nice. And then it's gonna bring us to the dashboard. So the login form is now officially fully functional. With that done, now let's go and build our functionality to log out the user because we're logged in and there's no way to log out at the moment. So to do that, I'm going to build a, a nav bar that at the top of the screen here and add it to our layout component. Um, so go to components and let's make a nav bar folder. I'm going to collapse everything so that everything is neat again. Just collapse and just reopen our nav bar. Just add index.js and it's going to be a React functional component. Name, we can call it navbar. Right, so I'm, at this point, I'm just going to start um, taking some snippets from my code uh, so that we can speed up the development process. And I'm going to just paste in some containers, some Flex containers in here. And just, um, we have to import the Flex containers from Chakra. And then I'm going to um, show you how this looks like in the browser, but I have to first go to my layout component and instead of just uh, saying this is the child and uh, outlet, we are going to add our navbar um, there in our layout component. So ideally, this uh, we want this navbar component to show up in every one of the protected routes pages. So and that's why we we're putting that in the layout component because the layout component is 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 the component that renders in every route that's in the children of the protected route component. All right. So we see. Okay. So that's what we see. We see, we see our nav bar here, and you can see it's basically just um, a, a small bar here with some tint on the top and dashboard just there. 
because dashboard is from our dashboard component here, this um, dashboard component. To show you better what this um, flex container does, I can just change the background to something like purple. We can go back to our browser and just refresh. You can see that, um, okay. Um, let's go back to the dashboard. I have to log in um, to test user. Um, what was, I forgot the password. Oh, it's password one, two, three. Yeah. All right, so we're logged in. And then that's purple. And then if we go back to the code, we take this background and we put it here red so that's the red section so the red section is where we're going to be putting our buttons and the purple section is just there for the layout uh, and i am going to take this link component and let's put it in this flex container and of course we have to import the link from chakra ui and then the router link we have to import that manually so import link react router dom link as router link and we have to import dashboard as well. So let's import that. And now we see our home link over there. And then I'm gonna copy a, com a button component. Just put it down here as well. So under link, I'm gonna have button and we have to import that from Chakra UI. Uh, and then we're just gonna comment the on click and is loading. So we have our button and our link and we can take out the colors so just like our login function, we are going to make a hook for the logout function as well. And we're going to go to auth and export function use logout. And um, okay, so what we're going to do in here is we're going to have a loading state. And we're going to return, okay, first we're going to return an object that has logout as well as is loading. And is loading is just going to be from react state. So is loading and set loading is use state false. And then we need an asynchronous function called logout because it's an API call. So to actually call the logout function, I'm going to go back to the um, React, Firebase React hooks uh, documentation. And there's this function called use signout that I can just copy. It's a hook that I can just put in here. And Actually, the loading state is going to come from this hook, which means we don't have we don't even have to implement our own is loading hook. I'm just going to change that to is loading, and we have to import that um, use sign out. So, where do we get that from? It's going to be from. Let's see here. It's going to be from React Firebase hook slash off. All right. So this. Oh, it's all. It's already. It's already up here use auth state and use sign out and here we're just gonna do await sign out go to the documentation and for use this use sign up the use sign out hook you can see that it returns it returns true if the function was successful or false if there was an error so um, we can just say um, if Wait, sign out. If if that's true, if we succeeded, then we're gonna toast the user and tell them that they have successfully logged out, and we're gonna navigate them back to the login screen. So we we're gonna need two hooks for that. Um, let me just see. We're gonna need const navigate equals to use navigate. That's to redirect the user back to the login screen after we're done with the logout. And then we're also gonna, we're also gonna need use toast to toast the user and. Um, Let's just toast first. We're going to toast them. <laughs> I prefer to just have it successfully logged out there. Then we have status to be success. We have is closable true. Position top duration 5000. <laughs> GitHub Copilot is a life savior, by the way. And we can navigate them back to the dashboard or more like the login page after they're logged out because dashboard is just going to send them to the login page anyway. Um, and then we can have like an else here, like else show error because um, sign out returns false if failed. And we should be able to just go to our navbar now and do const logout equals to use logout, I think. Did, uh, oh, did, did we name? Oh, yeah, we, we named it use logout. Okay. All right, and then it's gonna be is loading here. We have to import the use logout hook from hooks. I don't know why the autocomplete isn't working here. 
hooks slash auth. Did we export this function? Yes, we did. Okay. And then, so unclick should be logout. It's loading. It's just it's loading. And let's see if that works. So I'm gonna go back to my app. Let's hit logout, and it works. And then uh, we can log it back in at test user at gmail.com. There we go. Log out again just to make sure it works, and it does work. Sweet. So now we're finally going to work on the register form, and then we're going to move on to the actual posts and the users and user profiles and the comments and stuff. So I'm going to go to my auth um, hooks file here. It's hooks auth, and then under um, use login, I'm going to make a function here, a, a hook called um, use register. And I'm going to write all of the functionality for this use register hook before I uh, go and actually do the UI for the register component, which is here. It's right now it's just an empty component. Let's finish up the functionality first. Okay, so use register. Let's start with our return value so we know what our target is. So our target is going to be to return two items, which is the register function and then the is loading function. All right, so it's loading variable, sorry, it's loading state variable. So let's make the register function first. That's, um, that's going to be an asynchronous function, so async function register. So the register function is going to take in a username, an email, password, and uh, redirect to again, to redirect to um, the, the page that, um, to, basically this is just the page to redirect to after the registration is successful. I'm going to give it a default value of dashboard. And then uh, let's close this tag here. So basically the way we're gonna deal with user profiles in this project is if I show you my um, existing sample project here, we can see that we have our authentication tab in the console, in the Firebase console, and basically this is managed by Firebase. Uh, we, don't, we don't have access to, we don't really change the table here because this is basically managed by Firebase and we just tell Firebase to create a user and just the user just shows up in this table. But we're going to make another table inside of our Firestore database and, and we're going to make a collection called users and here we're going to store all of the user profile information for our users. And uh, I'm going to, uh, what I did was I basically just made the ID and here the ID field and the document ID the same as the ID in this users table. So if you look at Hostinger, you can see six uh, something two for VCN. If you go to Fire Fire Firestore database, you can see that um, the ID is pretty much is basically the same, and that's how I match the ID the users from this table and the users in the authentication table. And then here we can store we can basically store whatever values we want to store about this user. We can store their avatar URL. We can store the date that the user is created, the ID of the user, and the user's username. So um, Basically, when we call this register function here, we're going to have to do two, two things. We're going to have to add the user to the Firebase's authentication table, and we have, we have to also make our own user profile entry in our Firestore database. So let's go and make our loading state here. And um, so it's loading and settling. We start with false, and we're going to set loading to true when we start our register function. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the user to the databases. But before we do that, we want to check if the username that the user enter, which is from this variable here, and we want to check if the username already exists because we don't want two users with the same usernames. Uh, if, now, if we, we tried, if we tried um, to put the email, like the same email, and the email is already registered, Firebase has a built-in uh, error handler to tell us that, oh, this is an error, the email already exists. But because because the username is our own value, our own property that we have in our Cloud Firestore database. It's not in the authentication tab. You don't see a username here. You just see user ID, you see the, their email, but you don't see a username here. So we have to manually handle, handle our username our user, uh, to prevent duplicate values in our usernames. So I'm going to uh, call an arbitrary function called is username exists here. And this is um, a function that we're going to have to add ourselves later, but I'm just going to ignore that and just Treat it as a treat it as a black box for now, and just uh, say if um, const username exists 
equals to is username exist and we're gonna pass we're gonna pass in the username here and it's gonna be an API call because um, is username exists has to go and check in the Firebase uh, Firestore database to see if the username already exists so we have to be careful and remember to add a wait in here and we say if username exists then we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna toast them that username already exists and uh, tell them that uh, that's an error and then we're gonna set loading to false and it's very good that get github copilot has already uh, written all of that for me so that saves some time but I've, i still have to i still have to make the toast handle here and then then we can just do an else here and then we can return um you know actually i don't think we should return false here at all because then set loading false will, will never run because the return statement cuts this function off before we can we can reach that point so I'm gonna do a try catch block here because um, the user might try to be the user might be trying to s register with a username that uh, register with an email that already exists and Firebase will throw us an error so we we have to catch the error here we, we'll do try catch so try you do const res equals to await create user with email and password so this is something we have to import from uh, Firebase as well so up here. If we import create user with email and password we just go all the way back down and look for that line and we do that so basically this function expects an auth handle which remember we're, we're importing from the library slash firebase uh, auth handle object there so we're gonna we're gonna pass that as a first argument and then it's gonna take in an email and password so once this is uh, done, basically we already have our user created in the Firebase authentication table, but we have to now uh, go and manually add this user to our profile, user profiles table in Firestore. So I'm going to do await set doc, and now this is, the, this is actually the first operation that we're going to be doing with Firestore. So I have to go to our Firestore, uh, go to build, go to Firestore, uh, okay, no, I actually have to change back to my, our current Firebase project and because this is the first time we're using Firestore we have to go and create the database for the first time or it's gonna fail so I'm gonna start in test mode and let's see I'm gonna just enable this and it's gonna take a while to enable I'm gonna come back here let's just import set doc so import set doc from Firebase slash Firestore and then uh, let's come down here so we're gonna set the document and then we're gonna have to get a document reference here so um, I don't know why it's not we have to manually import that we have to ma let's import the document and then we have to also import the database handle because now we're working with a database and not just the authentication uh, feature so here I'm going to just do uh, make a document reference. The first uh, argument of the document reference is going to be the database handle, which is DB. And now this is going to be the, the name of the collection that we want to set this document to, which is just users. And then um, here I'm just going to put the, the ID of the document. And what the ID of the document is going to be is just res.user.uid. So we're getting the ID from the response uh, from the response here. The response is just giving us uh, giving us back the user object that has been created by Firebase and then it's going to generate an ID and it's going to be in the response. So we can just do dot .uid and then here we're going to have to pass in the data object here, the actual document. So the document is going to have an ID, the document ID, which is already here. But uh, the reason I'm going to make an ID here and just pass in an ID here anyway is because uh, fire, the way Firestore works is that it doesn't return you the ID when you try to get the doc later on and you have to manually parse the ID which is why I'm just going to skip through all of the hassle of doing that and just manually passing in the ID field here as well. Um, usually you don't have to do this, you can just get the document's ID to know what the ID of the document is but I'm just uh, taking a small short, shortcut here. And also, uh, that's why I'm using set doc and not using add doc because I want to set the document's ID and I want to make that equal to the user's ID in the uh, Fire, Firebase authentication table. And I don't want to just uh, generate an, a different ID for me here. 
and I hope that was all understand, uh, easily understand, understood. And if you have any questions about it, you can just ask in the comments. I'll do my best to explain in, in detail. So the idea will just be the uh, response dot user dot uid, and the username will be uh, the username, of course. But we can do dot to lower case just to make everyone everyone's username uh, in lower case. And the avatar, let's just give it an empty uh, URL for now. Until the user updates their profile, their avatar is just going to be the default avatar. And the date, basically just the date of uh, creation, when this user joined the platform. So we can do date.now. That's going to return a timestamp. And basically what this, the, the recap of what this entire line does is that we're calling setDoc, which setDoc is typically used to update documents in Firestore, but if the document doesn't already exist, Firestore won't throw, in, won't throw you an error, it'll just automatically create the document. And so the first argument is going to be the position of the document, basically the, re the document reference, where in Firestore are we going to put this document at? So uh, I'm just specifying it to be, uh, I'm just giving it the database handle, the name of the collection and the, the ID of the document. So uh, yeah, and then the second object, the second argument is just the, the document object itself, which is the data that I want to put in this document. And so after this is done, we should now have the user's profile in the Firebase authentication table. And we also have the user in our own Firestore custom user profiles table. And then once that's done, we can finally toast the user. And we can tell them that I'm just going to copy this entire toast and put it in here to save some time. And then we're also going to navigate them to the next page. Um, and I have to I have to define what navigate is, right? So const navigate equals to use navigate. There. And it's going to navigate them to the dashboard by default as the default behavior. And then and then we're going to catch the error here. And we're just going to tell the user what went wrong. Just basically a toast that says sign up failed. And then I'm going to add another block here that says finally. And I'm just set loading to false here uh, in the finally in the finally block and just save that. Okay, and so now basically the only thing I have to fix in here is I have to fix the is username exist um, utility function, which I'm gonna just make here in utils. We can do is user um, yeah, this is just is your name exist.js. And I'm just gonna take the code and put it here. Export default function is username exist. Uh, I have to I have to spell function right. And this is gonna be an asynchronous function because it's a it's a call, it's a checked, it's a call to the API to check if the username exists or not. So I'm gonna make a query object here. Um, and I have to import the query function from Firebase slash Firestore. And basically, it's we're going to take in the username here, and basically we're going to uh, query the collection, and we have to pass in the database handle, of course, and the name of the collection, which is users. And then we're going to use where the where clause to check where the username of the user is equals to the username. And I have to import that too. So collection and where. Right, so now that we have this query, it, it, this hasn't done anything yet. It's just, a, it's just a query specification. It hasn't made an API call to the Firebase Firestore uh, backend yet. So I have to now actually make the call to the Firebase backend using this query object. So I can use the get docs function, uh, which I have to import as well. Uh, so we get docs and we put in queue, which is the query object, and then we have to await this. And it returns a query snapshot that we can get in this variable. And then here we can just return query snapshot dot size greater than zero. So if the size is greater than zero, it means that this get docs function found documents that match matches this query. And that means the username already exists. Otherwise, it's going to return false, which means the username hasn't ex doesn't exist yet. So I can save that. And we're pretty much done with our use register hook in here. And we just have to implement the functionality in the UI component in register.js. So here in the, the register form, I'm just going to cheat a little and just go and copy and paste my entire login form because it's pretty much the same, just with an extra field. And I'm just going to rename this to register. 
and then here const register is loading equals to use register uh, use register here and so um, I'm gonna have to rename this to something else because it clashes with the register function from the use from hook do maybe just sign up that way uh, it doesn't clash and save we did just gonna handle register or handle handle register that works then register or more like sign up and sign up it's gonna expect data uh, it's gonna expect username too username is data dot username uh, okay so here I'm gonna have to add another form control field for username and then type type is just text so we don't have we can omit that placeholder is username the name is username errors dot username and then errors dot username here <laughs> pretty much shit and we can just change this to register and then we want the loading text to be signing up and then here instead of don't have an account we can change this to already have an account and then log in instead and here we're gonna link them to the login login page so I can get rid of the register constant and I'm not sure if this is gonna work but we can try and uh, open up the console I think that's pretty much everything we had to do for the registration form oh we have to change the text from login to register uh, so the heading is here register all right and let's just do like mm, test user and test user at gmail.com password one two three register the email address is not valid okay so I forgot to change the validation function here so for username instead of email validate we do username validate import that so let's try and refresh this form test user test user at gmail.com password one two three register um, gives us insufficient permissions I'm gonna go over to my Firebase console and to see to see what's happening here um, it, it seems like it failed creating that Firestore initialization when I was uh, first doing it okay okay so we have we have our Firestore database here um, I'm gonna try refreshing this page and doing it, doing it again so test user test user at gmail.com password123 um, again so I'm gonna go to my rules and see if the alright so we have the read write to be false so this is in production mode which means the, the security rules is it's not allowing us to write to this table if we're not logged in I'm just gonna temporarily change this to true and just uh, deploy this in um, development mode for now because it's not that secure because we're not we're allowing read and write access to the public um, but that's a, an issue that we'll deal with later on okay so let's try this to make sure the register page is working password one two three register and it says email already in use so I feel like that messed up our our first attempt messed up the database I'm just gonna delete this account here check if there's anything in my Firestore database nothing okay so let's try registering again uh, it's gonna give us ins insufficient p permissions uh, one two three setting up okay all right so it worked in the end so that was just a weird firebase glitch I think and if I go to my Firestore and console and just refresh it I should see a user uh, here in my Firebase authentication table and also in my users collection and we see the details here now before I move on and make any of these elements here in the main dashboard page like the posts and the profile and stuff uh, I'm gonna go back to our code one last time here in the auth section and fix uh, fix up this use auth hook so you notice that previously we just used the auth user and we just um, 
got it from the use of state hook and basically all we're getting in this auth user is all the information that is available inside of this authentication table so we have the email we have the password and then we have the id and that's pretty much it that's pretty much it so um, we don't have access to the avatar and the avatar links and the username and our own custom uh, values that we put in our users firestore collection so we, uh, let's fix that by uh, implementing some function calls in this use of hook to make it more robust. So what I'm going to do here is I'm instead of just returning the auth user object straight away to the user um, properly in the return object, I'm going to do some processing. I'm going to return a separate, a different user object that has both the information from the authentication table and from our user's uh, Firestore user profile table. So to do that, I'm going to make a different variable, a different state variable called um, user and then here I'm gonna do um, use effect so it, each time our um, I'm gonna change this is loading to a different name because we're gonna have two different loading states um, I'm gonna change this to auth loading so every time auth loading changes every time auth loading changes I want to run the code inside of this use effect uh, hook and I'm gonna make a function here that's asynchronous and we're gonna call this we're gonna call this fetch data and in, in this function I'm gonna take the auth users user ID I'm gonna take that ID I'm gonna go fetch the data from the Firestore uh, database uh, with the ID that I now that I now have and I'm gonna return I'm gonna make a new user that new user object that has both the users ID and the email and everything else the avatar and the username so here, the first thing I'm going to do is set loading to true, and I'm going to have my own loading state to fetch the for to handle the loading state for fetching the data from uh, Firestore. So is loading, and set loading. Use state. So here I'm going to set the loading state to begin at true because every time we use this use auth this use auth hook we're going to assume that we want to reach to reach a point where we can either determine the user's uh, user profile or the user isn't signed in yet so it'll always be true we'll never start use auth with false unlike other hooks like the use login hook where the loading state begins with false because in the login page nothing's loading in the beginning so it's just um, it starts to load when you click the button to, to log in but here in the use auth there, uh, it, it always loads on the page load so we start the uh, use state and true and use login is false so here after we set the loading to true we're gonna get a reference from the document reference um, of DB users and an auth user at UID so basically we're passing in the database handle as the first argument to this document reference and then we're gonna reference the user's collection and then and then this is the ID of the document and in this case the ID of the document is equal to the user's ID the user's UID and now that we have our uh, reference this doesn't do anything yet this is just a reference to a document in uh, a potential document in the Firestore database we haven't uh, sent out an API call to fetch the data yet so now we can use the actual function to, to call the API it's called get doc and then get doc takes in the reference so I have to import this too so let's import let's import get doc and then because this is an API call we have to await that and then we can get a snapshot back uh, in the response and then once we're done with all of that we can now go ahead and set loading to be false the problem with this is we're just uh, we're just putting the document snapshot into this constant we're not doing anything with it uh, so what we have to do is we have to take the user and then we have to set it into the state variable user and then we're going to return the state variable user instead of just auth user so um, we're just going to do const um, const user no actually let's just do set user and just set the doc snap so so this is just a snapshot it's just a snapshot containing all of the information and it has a whole bunch of other extra information like headers and other details about the API call that we don't need so we, we need to call the dot data method on this doc snap this document snapshot to get the data and that data is the data of the document and then we're going to take that data and set it into the user state variable and we're going to return that user state variable uh, so it's better I guess to just 
give it a default value of null because the user is going to start off at null and then this loading is going to be true. All right, so what I'm going to do next is because right now we just have a, an asynchronous function here inside this use effect hook called fetch data. It's not actually doing anything because it's just a function definition. It's not the function is not being called. So we have to call this function, but only only if auth user is not null and when auth loading is false. Because if auth, auth loading is still true, that means the auth user is still being fetched. It's still in the process of being fetched. So we don't want to we don't want to run this function yet. So if not auth loading, mean, meaning if auth loading is done, and if auth loading is done, we're gonna check if there's a user. Because if there's a user, it means we're signed in. Uh, I have to spell it right. And then if there's no user, that means that um, we're signed out, we're not logged in. So we just set loading to false and we do nothing here. We just say it's we're not signed in. If auth user is true, uh, that means the auth loading is completed. It's done fetching the user and there is a user. Then we will run fetch data. Let's go to the browser and try it out. So I'm going to try logging in with test user at gmail.com. We do pass password123, hit login. And it says we're logged in, but it doesn't redirect us back to the dashboard. So I'm thinking what's happening here is if I go to... If I go to layout layout um, index.js here uh, and we look at the redirect code, it says that if path name starts with protected and not user. But the, the issue is that the user is loading uh, at the beginning and when the user is loading, the user is undefined. And yes, it does um, return loading auth user if it's loading, but it, it um, this use effect is before this return statement, which means that it still runs and it still sees that oh, user is undefined even though it's the user is still loading. So one way to to fix this is that we can, uh, if we can say it's if it's not loading, and and then everything the rest. So if it's not loading, only should you check if the path name is protected, and then only should you check if the user um, the user doesn't exist. So if it's still loading, this entire this entire thing won't run because that's false, and then we won't navigate to login until is loading is true. Uh, that means I can just add is loading here, I guess, in the use effect array. So I'm gonna refresh this. Uh, test user at test user at gmail.com. Password one two three. Login fingers crossed, and we are logged in, and it doesn't. Uh, immediately kick us back to the login page, which is good. Work on the sidebar component. So you can see here that we have our sidebar and no matter which page I'm on, if I'm on the profile page or if I'm in the comments or the home page, you can see that the sidebar is always just there and it's constant. So that just means that we have to make our sidebar inside of this layout folder uh, and just include it in this layout, this layout index.js file here. So let us go and make our sidebar dot js and just looking at the structure of our folders and files i'm just gonna, i think i'm just going to take the nav bar just move it just move it into our layout folder just to ease uh, ease organization i'm going to update the imports so we have to now import the nav bar from component slash layout slash nav bar instead of components slash nav bar and you can get rid of that folder and just to make sure everything's still working, I haven't included the sidebar in the layout component yet. I just I just moved the navbar, and that's pretty much all that all that I did. So it should still work. And now let's make our component, our navbar, our sidebar component. So we have a sidebar here, and I'm gonna take some code and put it in here. It's gonna be a box. That's pretty much just the container for our sidebar. We can import that from Chakra UI. Uh, and just to show you uh, what this looks like, I'm gonna make a red background and it's not gonna show up here in the browser just yet because this sidebar is just a component that isn't included yet. So I have to go and import the, the sidebar in my layout component. There we go. And then here, let's just, um, let's see. Let's just put our nav bar somewhere here, just sidebar slash all right so that's our sidebar it's 
uh, it's on the left side which is on the wrong side and we can fix that with a few styling options here we can just make a flex uh, a flex container and we're gonna put our outlet in this flex container and our sidebar in our flex container as well and I'm gonna wrap our outlet in a box that has a width of 900 pixels and let's move the outlet inside of this box I have to import the box as well and then we can uh, style the flex we can give that like a padding top of 16 padding bottom we can give that 12 margin X auto I give it a full width and then a max width of 1200 pixels right so sweet so that's how our uh, sidebar looks like and I'm just gonna take out the red because we don't need that anymore and now I'm gonna go back to my sidebar component and let us go and add some components in here so in here I'm first I'm gonna have an active user component and that's basically this avatar and the edit profile this entire component here above the the purple bar and that's going to be our active user component so uh, I'm just going to leave that as a comment and then we're going to have to make that purple bar and then the all user the all users button so for the bar I'm just going to use the chakra box as a bar as a divider and let's see if that shows up all right so it shows up there and then uh, it's of course it's going to be um, pushed down when we have our, our active user component afterwards then uh, we're also gonna add a button here that says all users so I'm gonna put the button here so the button just has like an outline a variant of outline there are different uh, button types if you look at chakra UI so there's um, the variants we have uh, we have button outline uh, solid out outline ghost and link so I'm just using the outline variant let's comment that out first and yeah so we have all users um, I just want to find a way to center this if I do the line equals to center see if that works and of course it doesn't work because I'm adding the align center property to the divider box which is basically just that green bar that green bar up there that's the that's the box I'm adding the center to so it's not gonna work instead let me just make another box to wrap everything and put center on this parent box instead so um, right now it's, gonna, it's not going to do anything but if I do align equals to center it should align everything to the center so that's nice next let us actually make this button link the user to the profile the user the all users page so to do that let's go to our routes folder our, our routes file here and let's just do export const users uh, equals to protected slash users and we can add that as another child path here the path would be uh, users the element we're not gonna have any elements here first so we can just do users uh, a string as an element then here we can link to users and then we can import the users from our routes folder our routes file and then as the link now this link is going to be our react router link which means we have to import that and now if I go back to the browser and click on all users it'll uh, redirect us to protected slash users which is just basically a string right now and it is now time to work on the active user component I'm just gonna make that in this very same file in the sidebar so I'm just doing function active user and then it's gonna return a stack and then we can just active user and then this active user stack I'm gonna have code code is just um, a way to format our username so you see this let's go to the browser here um, so that that's basically just chakra UI's code component uh, it's basically to, for you to write code and show code in your website but I'm just using that component to display the username in a cooler way you know so we can just simply just type at username for now and you can see that shows up and another thing I want to do is I just I just, I just want to give a line equals to center here into the stack so that's center and we can give spacing equals to 5 as well as margin y equals to 8 so it has like 
uh, space above and below the stack as well as a spacing of five between each elements in the stack. So like if I had multiple code elements here, you can see that it has that spacing. If without spacing five, it's just all stuck together. So let's add, reintroduce the spacing. And then here I'm gonna add a button, edit profile, uh, color scheme, let's make it teal. And then, um, all right, so we have a pro profile. So we have our button there, and then I wanna make the button have a full width. So you see how this is like a long button, and this is short, so we can always just add width is full that makes it long and then we can also um, make add the functionality so that it brings um, our user to the actual edit profile page and as usual to make this button function as a button that will link us to the user's profile page we can do what we, we have always done which is to add the as equals to link prop so we're rendering this button uh, with the Chakra UI button styles, but the actual functional component behind this button is the link that we're getting from React Router. And then we also need this to prop uh, to know where to go. The thing is, so the way our URL is going to work is we're going to have something like slash protected slash um, no. All right, let me just do it in a string so it doesn't autocomplete. So it's going to be it's going to be in slash something like slash protected slash users. Uh, or more like protected slash profile slash um, the user the user ID so uh, if I go to my demo site if I do edit profile you can see protected slash profile slash whatever that user ID is so this is dynamic this is like a dynamic link and we have to go and add that to our router here um, so I'm gonna make a profile profile path export const profile equals to slash protected slash user uh, slash profile and then here it's going to be an id so that that's basically how you tell react router that this last part of the path here is a dynamic uh, a dynamic a dynamic parameter which we have to get so that's the id and then here we'll do um, profile and then here the element just user profile for a specific id and then um, let's do two equals two, and then we're gonna use a, a formatted string, and we can do protected the protected route slash profile um, slash, and then here we have to add the user's ID, and we don't know what it is, right? So we have to get the current user's ID, and as well as the current user's username to be able to make this update and not just hard code it. So how do we do that? Now remember the hook that we made in our hooks and auth. Here we have our use auth right here. Use auth will return us a user object and the is loading state. So here within the active user component, I can do user and is loading equals to use auth. And then here, instead of just uh, hard coding username in, we can do user dot id. And the problem with this is when users, when the user is loading, user is going to be undefined, and undefined doesn't have a property of ID, doesn't have dot ID. So I'm going to do like, if um, it's loading, then we we return loading, just loading, I guess. And then here we can do user dot ID, and then we have to add a question mark behind the user variable because. Uh, just in case the user doesn't have the user still undefined, it's gonna throw an error. Like if I just ignore omit that and let's just see if it gives us an error. I'm gonna go back to our app here and refresh this. So it's uh, I miss I mistyped that. It should be user dot username, not user ID, and it should be test user. So it works. And if I click edit profile, it's gonna bring us to uh, slash protected slash profile slash whatever the user ID is. So I was wrong. I don't. We don't need the question mark there. Then this works because this this early return statement will stop us uh, from rendering this component that doesn't when the user isn't defined yet. And now finally, let's add the avatar above the username here. I'm gonna use the avatar component from Chakra UI. And the good thing about the avatar component is that if I if I add um, so usually you, you would have to do a source and then give it like 
slash give it like slash images slash um avatar or png or whatever the source is right but for chakra ui for chakra ui is avatar component if you just provide it with like right now if i don't provide provide it with anything it's gonna just fall back to that default avatar picture if i give it a name of like mm, tl you will see t show up the initials will show up like I believe if I do TL space, space A, it's going to do TA. Let's do like C. Does it show three characters? No. So I guess two characters is the limit, the max limit. Because it's one for the first name and one for, for the last name. So if I did like uh, Donald Duck, it should it should do DD. All right. So instead of just giving it hard coding the name to be Donald Duck, we can change the name to do user.username. And then if our user is... It has, if our user is test user, and then it should be a T that shows up here. And I'm going to increase the size of this avatar to make it something like XL so it makes it bigger. And then also, the f one more thing I want to do is instead of just using the letters as the. I just want the letters to show up as a fallback, like just in case the user doesn't have a profile picture. But if the user does have a profile picture, and if I go to my Firebase here and I just add a profile picture this to this avatar field, I want it to be, I want it to show show up. So I can just go and go for a user profile picture image, and that's just, we're gonna we're gonna implement Firebase storage to uh, enable users to upload their own images uh, by the end of the tutorial. But for now, for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna just Google, just like right click copy image address, just put it in here in our avatar. Let's put it, let's update that. And then right now you, still, you don't see the avatar show up. So I'm gonna make the source here equal to the user.avatar. And it should show up and it gives us that updated avatar. One final touch up I wanna do to this avatar is that look, when I hover, it doesn't, doesn't do anything to my mouse and I can't click it. And when I click it, nothing happens. But if you look at the app here in my demo, I can click on the avatar, it will bring me to the profile. So if I just click on it, you can see it brings me to the profile. So I'm going to just add a few styles here. You can use the hover, the, the on hover target in Chakra UI to specify styles to add when the mouse is hovering over the object. So I'm going to make the cursor a pointer. And that basically just means the cursor becomes like a clickable cursor. I'm also going to give it like um, background opacity maybe opacity of 0.8 percent like 80 percent and it's going to reduce the opacity so it makes it more it makes it feel like it's a, a clickable object and right now it's not gonna it's not if i go home i click on my avatar it's, it does nothing so you could you could always just do as as equals to link uh, uh, link and then do two equals to whatever destination you want it to be but i already have that in my button down here and i don't want to just keep adding as equals to link to everything so another way of uh, implementing the link functionality to all of these components, I just want to wrap this entire section in the link component. So I can just take this out and just do a link. And then we just wrap the entire thing and get rid of the as prop. We just take the two and just put it here in the link and just save this. So no matter what I click inside of this link component, no matter if I click the button, the code, or the avatar, I should be able to just uh, go to the link. So if I click on the avatar, it brings me to the link and that's great. Now I noticed that that messed up our styles a little bit here. So um, that's because we're messing with the stack component. We can just move the link outside of the stack component and now that should fix the styles and we can click anywhere in the stack and link us to the profile. So I can do that and link us to the profile. Even if maybe this isn't that optimal because if I go home and I click on this empty space, and not on the avatar itself, it will still link me to the profile. So we might want to fix that. So the way I'm going to fix this is I'm just, I'm just going to revert back to what we had originally and make the button a link and just just um, have that here in this avatar. We're going to make this avatar as a link and then we're going to send it to somewhere. And I'm going to take the avatar and put it out in its own separate component. Because if you look at our demo project here, we have avatars in a lot of places in our project. We have avatars here in the sidebar, we have avatars in our posts, and we have avatars here in our all users page, and in our, uh, let's see, in our comments here as well. So we have avatars in a lot of different places. 
And just to have our one avatar component in a different file, we can just reuse that avatar component in multiple places. So I'm going to make a new folder here called profile. Uh, profile. Because we're going to have a profile route later on anyway. We're going to have profile slash whatever. And we're going to have an index.js in this profile at some point. But right now I'm just going to put the avatar in here. And uh, let's do a re react functional component. And then we can return this avatar. And then uh, we have to import the avatar. I'm just going to comment this too. And then we have to import the link as well. So let's import our link. And let's import avatar. Because um, the avatar has this, this component has the same name as the function. So that's not going to work. I'm going to do chakra avatar here. And then we can do import avatar as chakra avatar. And then here we're going to have to get the user from the prop the props so we have we have that and then if let's just say if user if not user and then we're gonna return loading because the, the user could be loading here and we don't have like access to the is loading prop here so we just detect if the user is null then we just return loading and then here instead of doing that here I'm just gonna take the user and put it um, in the avatar component so avatar and then the user equals the user. We have to import the avatar, not from Chakra UI, but from our own component. So we import avatar, and then uh, let's fix this two. So two equals to our formatted string. The base is gonna be the profile slash profile slash, and then the user ID. There we go. So uh, can't read properties of null. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to add the question marks I was talking about earlier to to the user variable. Now, if I refresh this, it should it still says um, null. Let me check. Let's just all right. Let's just add the question marks everywhere, and it should fix the problem. There we go. And you don't you see that our mouse doesn't uh, we can't click the empty spaces out here anymore. And we can only click the button or the avatar. If I click on the avatar, it's gonna bring us to the profile. Wait a minute, this this uh, this link isn't the right link we, that we want because we don't want a colon ID appearing in our URL. That's just for React Router to par to parse the back end. So I feel like we've done something here. Yeah, this shouldn't be profile here. It should be it should be protected. Um, protected. So the reason why I was doing that was because. If we look at our routes here and we have our profile uh, this string right here is is just to be put here for react router to to parse that and just understand that the last part of the URL is the ID and we're not supposed to actually put that in our link so I'm going to save this and if we go back and just click on the avatar it brings us the profile and another thing I want to do is I want to get rid of all of these um, question marks because um, it generally it isn't it isn't a good practice to be adding question marks every, everywhere and just because you never know it's unpredict unpredictable and you never know uh, if the user is going to be undefined or not. So instead of just doing question marks everywhere, I'll just take I'll just get back this loading state here. Just um, if it's loading, and then we just return loading and just get that back and see if that works. And refresh that. Uh, let's hope it works. I'm going to edit profile. It works. And then if I click on the avatar, that works as well. So that's that's much better. That's uh, that's better practice. All right, I'm going to take a break from all of our user profile editing and profile pages and go and backtrack a little to our dashboard component. So our dashboard component is going to have a section to add new posts. And then we're going to have a list of all of the posts just on the feed in our dashboard. So I'm going to make this new post component first. And um, let's go back to the code here in the dashboard in x.js. And let's replace this. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a box. And then uh, I'm going to give it a max width of 600 pixels. Uh, some uh, Give it some margin and padding. And here... I'm going to have a form 
and that form is gonna be for this input here right and then in here I'm gonna have just a horizontal stack and then I'm gonna have a heading that says new post and then I have to import that from chakra and let's refresh this um, doesn't do anything right now so I'm gonna go and look at our routes maybe it's because we yeah that's because we have the string here as our dashboard element we're gonna do dashboard instead and we should see our new post and that's that's nice but I feel like I want to downsize the heading let's change the size to something a bit smaller and that's LG and that looks perfect and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a button here at the end of the new post like to the right of this new post title and that's the post button that you see there so let's go ahead and make that button it says post and we have to import this then um, let's see so we have our post button I'm gonna have to make it all the way to the right though so I'm just gonna give this h stack uh, justify space between and that should make it all the way to the right and let's give this button a color scheme teal and we're gonna do a size of medium margin top let's you know what before we do all of that let's see if that looks no yeah it looks pretty much the same so i don't have to add any of the other props but one very important thing i forgot uh, to add here is the type of a submit to this button because i'm going to be using react hook form again to deal with the form here and to run the handle submit function and stuff like that and we, if we don't put this type of submit here to this button uh, the react hook form doesn't know that this button is the submit button and it, it won't probably won't handle submit if we click on this button and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to give I'm gonna make a text area. So, Chakra UI has this text area that we can uh, we can resize like that. Um, for some reason, it's stacked next to yeah, because it, that's because it's in the H stack. I have to take it out of the H stack and then make it self closing, and it should be below. And we want to get rid of that uh, that adjustment handle there. So what we can do is we can do um, resize equals to none. And then what I'm going to do is give it margin top. Let's give it margin top of five, and that's going to space it nicely. And I'm going to just refre refresh this. So what you're going to notice is that when I when I go down, it's going to it's going to scroll, and that's not what we want. Because like if you if you look at our demo app here, you can see that it automatically resizes, and that looks aesthetically much more better, and it's it looks much better. Uh, so we're going to use this package from npm called react text area auto size which uses jquery to automatically resize our text area input and it's just some it's just a fancy little detail that we can just add with yarn and then while that's running i'm just going to add some i'm going to add a placeholder here uh, create a new posts a new post there and mm, then let's restart the server and then to, to use that component in here I'm just gonna use the as prop again so as text area auto size and you have to import this so let's import there and then if I refresh this now if we type stuff it automatically resizes which is perfect another prop that you can pass to chakra UIs text area is the min rows uh, the min rows prop it'll just make the minimum number of rows um, larger so if i do 10 you can see the minimum rows is it's going to be 10 but i'm just going to leave it at three the next thing we're going to do is just implement the react hook form hook called use form like we have done for the previous forms so we're going to do const an object equals to use form and then we can get register from here and we're going to register this text area as an input so use the spread operator on the register and here we can just do um, text and then here we can have some validation uh, which is pretty much let's just do required equals to true and that's all of the validation that we're going to do for our 
text in our post. We're not going to make another validation function for this one. And um, let's import use form. So let's see if the auto import works. It does. We can also get handle submit as well as reset from our use form hook. And here on the form can do on submit equals to handle submit. Um, let's say handle post. And then we have to make that function, of course, uh, async function. Do we actually, we can just do a function handle post. We'll add async if we have to make an API call afterwards. And here, let's just do reset. It's gonna, we're going to get the data object and we can console.log and see what it looks like again. So basically, this is pretty much like our pre previous example. The data object is going to come from the handle submit function from the use form hook. And reset just basically gonna wipe the file, wipe the form to its original state. Let's go to our browser and just try it out. So I'm gonna do whatever here. Let's hit uh, post, and here you can see the data object that's console uh, that's logged to the console. And uh, basically, we have a text prop that has the text. Um, yeah. So instead of just logging that to the console, we have to actually post this and upload this to the database. And for that, I'm going to use our use another one of our custom hooks, and I'm going to make a new file in our hooks directory called posts.js. And here we can finally make our first React hook that isn't <laughs> that does that doesn't have anything to do with authentication, unlike use auth, uh, use login, or use register. Now this is going to be called use use post use add post so export default export function use add post and we're going to return a function here to add post as well as the is loading state and then we have to make our async function add post and this function is going to take in a post object then uh, so we're gonna set loading to true here when we first start to add the post and that means we're gonna have to make our state variables so we have to import use state and then we're gonna just set loading to true and then we're gonna um, we're gonna make our post inside of this add post and just like our register use register hook where we are making we're adding new documents to our users profile table in uh, Firestore we're gonna use set doc instead of add doc because I don't want to rely on Firebase to create uh, random document IDs for me and I want to be able to make my own IDs and have more control over it that way I can create documents and add the ID field into the documents themselves so I don't have to worry about getting the document ID later on so uh, set doc is an asynchronous function so I have to await that so it takes in a doc reference here in the first argument and it takes in the document object as the second argument. So document reference I'm going to make using the doc function. Uh, this is basically version 9 syntax uh, for Firestore or Firebase. And the first argument for the document reference is going to be our database handle, so db. And the next is going to be our collection name. I'm going to name it posts, just like our sample database if I go to the test social media app test down here so that's the name of our collection it's called posts and it's gonna have all of the different documents and here you can see we have the ID field in our document so usually if you use add doc it will just generate a random document ID and you won't have access to the ID field inside of the document itself and you have to use you have to use like snapshot dot ID or something to get the ID and you can just um, there's more there's extra steps involved so I just prefer to add the ID into the document itself so I'm gonna do ID here um, and then the ID I'm gonna make using this library called UID v4 um, from I guess we can just try the firebase util <laughs> UID v4 function to see if it works because usually we have to install this other library to make our UIDs for us and if this works then we don't have to install that um, so in this object I'm gonna use the spread operator on the posts on the post object there and then I'm gonna just inject the ID there I'm gonna inject the date which is the date created as well I'm gonna inject um, a likes field so likes is gonna be 
an array and this array is going to store all of the user IDs of all, the, all of the users that liked this post. So when we create a new post, it's not going to have any likes yet. So it's just going to be empty and date can be date.now. And I'm going to see if this works. Let's go to our handle post. Um, you know, I'm going to re rename this to handle add post so it's less ambiguous. And then I'm going to make our hook here. Uh, let's do add post equals to, and then we also need is loading use add post. And then uh, let's go to our button here and change is loading equals to our add post. One thing I forgot is um, when I'm using the add post function here, I have to pass the UID, the user ID, and as well as the text. The text I can always just get from data.text, which is coming from the React hook form data object. But UID, uh, this so basically this ID that you see here is the, uh, the ID for this document, this post, the ID for this specific post. But here we're gonna have to add a UID. Uh, UID for the owner of the post, the poster, so the user ID of the person who posted this post. <laughs> so for that, I have to go and get the current user object. So I guess we just, we'll just use our user, our use auth hook that we've made, and I can call is loading to adding post, uh, add adding post, yeah, and then here auth loading. So th we have two different loading states. And here the UID is just going to be the user.id. And one thing to notice is that the, when the user is initializing, is loading the auth loading will be true, and then user will be undefined. And if we try to add the post here, it's going to give us UID of undefined, which we, which we never want. So we want to limit the user to, be, to only be able to post and submit this form once the user is done initializing. So here I can use the is loading prop to say if if uh, auth, load, auth loading is loading, which means the button should be loading in a loading state, which means it's disabled and it's, it's uh, spinning. And then I'm going to do adding post here as well. And then let's do loading text equals to just loading. So we have to import use auth as well. Let's import that. And yeah, so technically this should work if I go over to our React application and try to add a post. It's not going to show up here in the space below just yet because we haven't made the component for the post list, but we should be able to go to our Firebase console and uh, see the collection here appear. So if like collections don't exist in Firestore, like the posts collection doesn't exist yet, and you try to add a document to that collection, Firestore will automatically create that collection and add the document inside of that collection. So let's make new post. Let's hit post, it's gonna be loading. And then um, I'm gonna go, go and see if it updates the Firebase console. So we do see our posts collection appear and we do see a new document here. And uh, the, the form field is reset, and that's how we know that the reset uh, function has ran. Uh, it ran, but the button is still in the loading state, and that's because if I go to my posts hook, you can see that I set loading to true, but I never set loading to false, which means I'm going to have to set loading to false here. And then uh, I'm just going to add a toast. Uh, I'm going to go and grab a toast and just put it here. Just put the toast here, and then just just to notify the user that they added the post successfully. And I'm going to const toast equals to use toast there. And if we refresh this and we do this is another post, and I hit post, and there we go. The post added successfully, and then the field is reset, and we can go to our console and we can see another post showed up. So now let's go and make our post list so we can actually see the posts that we've added to the Firestore database. Um, I'm going to go to our files here and just make a new folder here called posts or just post. And then in this post, I'm going to make index.js and this is going to be one post. It's going to be the component of a single post. And then we're going to have another component for the post list. So I'm going to make that posts list.js so this is one post and this is all of the posts i'm first going to make one post 
and um, let me import React. We can do post. So I'm gonna have a box and the padding. Let's have padding of two. I'm gonna have max width of 600 pixels. And then um, in this, I'm gonna have to import this box from Chakra UI as well. And then here I'm gonna have, I'm just gonna find a way to render this post to the browser first. I'm gonna make our, our React functional component this post list. A post list is gonna take in all of the posts and then we're going to return posts.map so actually let's just return a box here um, and then I'm going to give this box padding at x of 4 units and then we're going to do posts dot length equals to zero so if the post length is zero then um, we're just gonna we're just gonna print something out here just say like no posts or something and if the post length is not zero which means there it's greater than zero then we're gonna do posts dot map and we're gonna map for every post we're gonna return a post and then of course we have to give it a key value here or, or else React is going to complain because we need, every time we use dot map, we have to add a key to each uh, individual post. Then we, we're going to pass the post data object because uh, remember that our post is expecting some data and we can destructure this post data here and just um, we're going to get some information from this post object and we're going to worry about that later. So the key, let's just do key is post.id because each post is going to have an ID and we can import this post um, from dot slash index, right? And then here we have to import box as well. Let's do that. And then um, let's go back to our dashboard and below our, below our new, um, our hand, our new post, component we're gonna make another component here for the post list uh, what I could do is also just take this and, and make it in its own fun own component so function new post and just just take this entire thing let's just return this here just return that um, and then we're gonna have to take all of that uh, and bring it there in this new post component and then I'm also just gonna just do new post and then here uh, post list so right now it's not gonna show us anything yet even though we have this um, if posts length equals to zero show no posts and that's because posts itself is undefined and undefined is not equal to zero so I guess we just have to go to our dashboard here and just give it a mock data of uh, an empty array. Now we should see no posts. I'm gonna make this a little bit more aesthetic by giving this, by making this a text component from Chakra UI. Just no posts yet dot dot. Feeling a little lonely here. And we are gonna give the font a size XL it looks better and then we're gonna we're just gonna do text align center so now I'm gonna go back to the code and just go to the post component and let's um, add something into this box I'm gonna add this um, I'm just gonna paste this code in and basically what I've done is I have added a header a box section and actions so I'm just gonna comment out the header and the actions we don't have to worry about that yet basically what that's gonna be is uh, this upper part here that's gonna be the header we're gonna have like the date the time posted and the user who posted this post and then the actions is just bottom bar with the like button and the comment and if you make a new post it's gonna also have that delete button if you are the owner if you're the original poster so 
I'm gonna import the text from Chakra UI. Uh, and just see how this looks. So basically what this is, is it's basically just breakpoints and we can just we can just set the font size to medium for now. And if I go back to my React app and it's still not gonna show a single post because if I go to my dashboard, you can see I provided posts to be an empty array and when it goes to the post list, it's gonna just look and see that the post length is zero, just return this and instead of just mapping through the post. I can just give it like mock data and just do one, two, three, blah. Right, and it's gonna give us the, any number of posts there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change the text here to reflect the text that's in our post here. So this text, this text value from our Firestore database. So to do that, let's go ahead and write another one of our custom hooks inside of posts.js. So just under add post, just under use add post here, I'm gonna export another function called use posts. And here I am going to just make a query to the database to find all of the posts and just list them out. So as usual, I'm gonna make a constant uh, queue, which is the query for our posts and the collection. I have to import the query, don't I? I have to import this from Firestore there, from Firestore. Then we're gonna query in the first, the first argument is always the database handle. And then the next is going to be our, actually, uh, we're just going to just do collection here and then database handle inside of a collection. And the name of the collection is going to be posts. And then uh, I'm going to use React Firebase hooks again for this. I'm going to go and look for the top use. Okay, this is not the right. This is, uh, this is for auth. I have to go look for uh, Cloud Firestore hooks. And just look for use collection data and just copy so we, we can we can just use collection data so const it take we get values loading error snapshot so posts is loading and then equals to use collection data and we have to import that from we have to import use collection data from React Firebase hooks slash Firestore. And then here we're gonna have to pass the query in. So I'm gonna put Q. And then um, let's also just get the error because we can get the use collection, use collection data, we can get um, values loading error and snapshot. So let's just get the error and if there's an error we can just throw the error so we can see the error in the console and just fix it. And then we can return the posts and is loading. So if I go to my post, if I go to my dashboard here and I do const posts is loading posts loading equals to use. Um, this is not even the right place to do it, I'm sorry. This is in the new post component. I want to be doing this in the dashboard component. Um, use posts and I have to import this. So instead of just hard coding the posts, I'm gonna do posts here and just um, go to our post list and see if everything works. And we're getting the posts here and we're putting the post to our individual posts and here we are going to just do the text and we're going to get we're going to destructure the text from the post object so if i go back to chrome and i uh, go to my app you can see that it shows this is another post and new post and that's because in our firestore database we have this is another post and then we have new post and if i go and add another post here let's do that it goes to the bottom of the list. I can add more. And sometimes it goes like in between the posts and that's just, this is weird. We don't want that. We want the newest post to be on top and the oldest post to be at the bottom. So we can modify our hook in our VS code posts, use posts hook. And here in this query, I can go and modify this and we can add um, the order by clause 
and you have to import that from Firestore. So we can order by the date. This is why we created that date, um, that timestamp, that date field, and we can order by descending. So now you can see the newest one always goes to the top. This is the newest post. It should go to the top. There we go. And I'm going to come back to my dashboard component here. And I realized that I'm not using this post loading uh, state. So I can just do if is loading. Then we'll return loading. Loading posts. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this header thing. So I'm going to go and make this header.js component and let's go and close out the rest of the things that we don't need. So this is going to be a React functional component. And that's, uh, I'm just going to put the container in here. It's going to be a flex. And we have to import that from Chakra UI. And like if I go to the browser right now we don't see anything new because we have to import we have to import and use the header so import header and let's use that so we we do see that small header appear and i am going to add a few things into this header i'm going to add first of all if we look at our demo app we're going to have our avatar and we all remember that we already made that avatar component inside of our profile. So this this avatar here, we can just import that and use that here. So import avatar, and just use the avatar here. And one thing to note is that this is going to give us an error because avatar here it expects us to give it a user object, and we can't just. Uh, get the current user with use auth the use auth hook in here and just put the current users into the, the avatar here Because that's because you can see that the user depends on the owner of the post the user ID of the the poster and not the current user itself, so we have to somehow uh, Get the post the get the user ID in here in the header and then just use that um, to get the details from Firestore, like the user's avatar, the, the user's avatar and the user's username. So let's just do UID. And then here, we're gonna go to the post and provide the UID here. So this is the ID of the poster. And then the UID is something that we can get from the post. We can destructure, destructure that from the post object because if you look at the Firestore database, in the post we have the UID field which contains the ID of the owner. So let's save that. Let's um, save this. And right now we don't really have a way to get the user's information. Uh, that's why we're going to have to make another hook here. I'm going to make a new file called users and here we're going to have all of the user related hooks. So let's make this use user and then let's take in the user ID. This hook is going to be pretty simple because all we have to do is read the document in the user's Firestore collection that contains all of the user information that we need. Um, so let's use React Firebase hooks for this. We're going to use the use collection data hook again. So we can do const. We're going to get the user, and the user um, basically just is loading, and then error. We don't even need error, I don't think. We can just omit that and we just use document data and then here it's going to take in a query right and we can just make that query constant so query it's going to be a document reference and in here i'm going to have to close that and in this document we're going to pass in the database handle and then we're going to pass in the collection name which is users and then the id and let's see if the formatting is right do i need one more Right, doc is just not imported, so I have to import that. And then we can just return the user and the is loading. That should pretty much be our use user hook. That's all we need. So I can go back to my header component here, and we're getting the UID from our from our post because we're passing in the UID to our header. So now that we have access to our user ID, we can just get the rest of the user information. And just pass it into this avatar here so we're gonna pass 
user here and we're expecting to get that user object right so we can just do const um, user and then it's loading equals to use user and then pass the UID I have to import this and let's say if loading return loading that should work if I go to my browser and you see that we have our user uh, and you can always just look for sample uh, dog image <laughs> and just like just get one of these images let's just go and copy image address and just like change the avatar and you can see it changes the dog picture to the avatar and one thing is that this avatar is a bit too huge and if I go and do size equals um, MD here it's not going to do anything because this avatar is not the Chakra UI avatar component. It's our own custom avatar component's profile here, which means I'm going to have to manually take the size in. Let's have the default size to be XL instead and just put size equals to size here. So if we don't specify a size in the props for our avatar component, it's just going to default to XL. But if we do so choose to re to override the size with our own custom size then they'll that will work you can still see that this is xl and this is uh this is sm i believe the next section i'm going to add is this user this um user profile and then the date like how long ago was this post added so let me go and take that piece of code and just put it down right beside the avatar it's going to be a box that has a button for the user username and the text for how long ago this post was created so i'm going to import that let's import that and import text as well so if i save this you can see that we have our sample username i don't even need the elias i think it's just a sample username and then nothing happens when i click on it right now and it's just giving me the sample username and not the actual uh, username yet so let's go ahead and make this print out the actual username so remember we have access to this user object i can just do user dot username so there we go we have our test user and two hours ago is just hard coded right now uh, so what i what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the date from the post so here instead of just passing just the uid i'm going to pass in the date as well and the date is something we can destructure from the post as well that's the date created it's going to be a number it's going to be a timestamp and we can get that from our our post document you can see that each post is going to have a date and that's coming from our uh, post our add use add post hook and remember when we we may made new posts we'll always add the date property and uh, it's going to have date dot now in it so that's going to be the timestamp of when the post was created so now that we have access to that date uh, i'm going to install a, a new library it's going to it's called uh, date FNS so date and FNS NPM so this is the library that we're going to use to format the date because we have to somehow convert this this timestamp number into a string a readable date for humans to read and so we're going to just NPM I date FNS or we could just use yarn so let's stop the server yarn at date dash FNS and uh, once that's done installing i'm just gonna go here import format distance to now from date fns and just here on start and then here i'm gonna just format distance to now and then date ago and you can see that it's working it's 18 minutes ago 19 minutes ago 42 minutes ago if i make a new post right away and i hit post you can see less than a minute ago and that's just going to automatically format and update so the thing is with our current setup if i hover over the avatar and I click on the avatar it's going to redirect us to the profile because we are you we're just reusing the logic from our avatar component and the avatar component takes the user object and since the user object has all of the different user information in it it has the avatar link it has the, the user's id so it can just automatically link us to the user the user profile page but if i click on if i clicked on the user button here the name of the user it's not going to do anything because our button doesn't have uh, it doesn't know what to do it's, it doesn't have an on click it doesn't have a link component so what i can do is i can just go to profile here let's just make 
username button as a component make a react functional component here and then uh, I'm gonna go to my header and I'm gonna take the entire button thing and put it here so we can reuse this and I'm thinking to update this code as well to make it so that I can click on that um, I'm gonna just um, have to get the user the user information here whoops to get the user information here and then we do user username and then we can do as equals to link and we have to import the link from react router and then we have to add two so let's use an f string protected slash profile slash um, user dot id and then here i'm just going to reuse that username button and we can pass in the user like that like just like how we do it to the avatar let's see if that works um, oh that's just because I I have to I have to put this user in a prop in an object because what I was doing is I was just like it's supposed to be prop and then like const uh, user equals to prop uh, I was just doing I was just doing user here which wouldn't work you could just destructure it like that and then it should work now if I go and yeah it works if I click on it, it brings us the profile that works and so we can reuse that later on and maybe I, I'll i get rid of this view profile here and just make the user's uh, username clickable and that way you can save we can just reuse code I just noticed that our post list is aligned slightly to the left and I want to make that centered so what I can do is I can fix that by going to posts list and let's just do align center all right, so that looks much better. But you're gonna notice that our um, our text is and our, our buttons are aligned more to the center as well. And, uh, we want that to be aligned left. So what I can do is I can go to the individual posts, which is in the post index.js here. Let's just do text align. Let's center that, and we should be able to. Did I spell that wrong? I did. All right. So let's refresh this. Mm. Oh yeah, it should be aligned to the left. There we go, much better. And the next thing I want to fix is if I scroll down here, you can see that the new post it like goes behind the nav bar, and but we can still see that. So I don't want that to be transparent. Can you go to our nav bar in our layout here? Nav bar, just add a background of white, and then that should cover it up. And the next thing I'm gonna do is work on the actions side, the actions section of the posts. So you can see this bar down at the bottom with the like, comment, and delete. That's the actions component that I'm going to include here in our post. So um, let's go ahead and make actions.js. Make it a React functional component. And let's just uncomment that. I have to import actions. And then let's save that. So in this actions component, I'm first going to make the container. Let's do flex and give it some paddings. Uh, I'm going to give it a padding of 2 and I'm going to make an inner section here. Let's first make the like section. So the like button at the bottom left. I'm going to wrap it in a nested flex container and then I'm going to align items. <laughs> I'm just going to center it from the get-go. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this component from Chakra UI called icon button. So icon button, it's a self-closing tag. And you can see that's gonna be our like button. And let's make it slightly smaller. I'm gonna make it MD. And let's add the color scheme to be um, red because hearts are always red. And if I save, you can see that becomes red. And then we can make the variant equals to ghost. There we go. And then now we actually have to get the shape of the heart, like the like, the like icon. So I'm gonna do react icons it's a package that has all of the popular icons that we can just uh, include in our project if we look at like or like fa hard so that's our hard that we can use and then that's like if we clicked on the like and it's liked then we'll use this icon if it isn't liked then we're gonna just use that regular hard that that isn't filled so first i'm gonna start the server 
yarn add react dash icons and that's how we install up the icon packages and I'm just going to click that to co copy this to the clipboard I'll import this as well as fa hard we're, gonna, we're not going to use fa hard for the time being because we have to implement the functionality to detect if uh, the current user has liked this post or not but we're not going to do that yet. we're just going to focus on the UI and then I'm going to restart the server then let's add the icon here so um, what I'm going to do is do icon equals to um, fa regular heart backslash so if we go back we can see that there's our uh, no that's our demo app if we go back to our uh, applications in the browser and refresh that there there our heart that's our heart right there and uh, I'm gonna make this rounded like if I, I click on this button you can see it's kind of rounded the highlight which means we can just do is round and that's rounded and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add a number here just below the icon button and this number is gonna represent the number of users who has liked this post if I go to the browser you can see that number appears just beside the like button and I'm gonna implement the functionality to read the number and the, whether or not the user has liked this post and I'm gonna get the post information from the props so let's get the post and we can destructure the information from the post object now before we do that I'm gonna to have to go back to our our individual post cards and then you can see that the action components being called here I'm just gonna pass the post the post data object in here so we can have access to that in the actions and while I'm doing that I'm also just gonna modify the header here because you can see that we're manually passing in the UID and the date to the header uh, what I could also just do is just pass in the entire post that way we don't have to destructure the post here or we still do we just no need to take out the date and the UID just have to get the text and put the text here and then in the header I'm gonna receive instead of receiving UID and date I'm gonna receive a post item that we can destructure in here to take in the UID and the date and I'm just gonna get rid of that uh, import and then here in our actions I'm going to re destructure the post to get the like information so if I go to Firestore database console you can see that each post document is going to have this field called likes and it's going to be an array containing a, a list of all of the user IDs of the users that liked this post so I can get the likes from this post and then here I'm just going to do likes.length And if I refresh and go back to the browser, you can see right now there's no likes. So the likes.length is zero. And then I'm also gonna do is liked. Let's just set this to true for now. And in the icon button, if if uh, if is liked is true, then we wanna display this FA heart icon. If not, we're just gonna display this regular heart. So is like is liked. I'm gonna use this ternary operator to say if that's true, we render the FA heart. Otherwise, we render the regular heart. So you should see that it's liked right now. If I change this to false, that would be false. So instead of hard coding if the is liked variable is true or false, let's actually go and write functionality to detect if uh, the current user has liked this post or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new post here. Uh, I want to like this post and let's post that. And then we should see that appear in our console there so I want to like this post and right now the likes array is empty but we can add a field here and let's just go and grab our current users user ID and I'm just gonna take that and copy and I'm gonna simulate a like by going to our uh, post and just adding this to our array of liked likes so I'm gonna add that and you can see now the likes array is uh, it has a length of one so technically I should see one here and that's what we do see we see one in this post and zero in the rest so we note for for a fact that our counter is work, working but now we have to just highlight this like button so that it's it shows that we're we have liked so to do that we first have to figure out um, 
what our current user ID is within this action component. And then we check if our current user's ID, the logged in user's ID is within this likes array. So if I console log likes and refresh this, you should be able to see that we have like an array and it has the length of one and that's our current user's ID. But we need a way to check if our current user's ID is inside this likes array. So what I'm going to do is, is liked is equal to, so likes.includes. So this is a JavaScript, a JavaScript um, built-in method for uh, arrays. We can use this includes method to check if something is inside of this array. So I'm going to just hard code this, our current user's ID here for now. And you can see that works. These posts don't have likes but this, this one does have a like, and we can just try it on, on another post, like new post. Let's just add our user ID into the likes array, and we should be able to see that there are two posts here that are liked. So that one here, that one there. All right, so let's go and use our use auth hook. So use auth, um, this is our, cast, our custom hook that we made, and it's gonna return uh, user object and is loading. Let's just rename this to user auth um, or just user loading. And I'm gonna do user user dot id. And we refresh that and we can see it still works. And so now is the time to add our on click to our icon button here. So ideally what on click will do is just call a function like toggle like and then we're going to get toggle like from our custom hook called use toggle like which we'll write just in just a second and then um, we're going to destructure two things we're going to destructure the toggle like function and also the is loading which will just be um, just is liking i guess uh, or like like loading I, th I feel like i prefer that more okay and then here we can add is loading equals to just I'm gonna show you what a loading icon button looks like. So I'm gonna just set that to true and you can see when it's loading it looks like that, which is very nice. Uh, and that's from Chakra UI. So let's un just uncomment that again. And another thing I wanna do is I'm gonna have to pass in, I'm gonna somehow has have to tell this use toggle like hook what the current user's ID is. Because then this toggle like hook is gonna return a function that that, that toggles the like on and off and it has to know what our current user's ID is in order to be able to like or unlike uh, the likes array in the post document. So let's just preemptively just give it um, the post ID, give it an object that has the, the ID which is basically what we're going to get from the post and that's going to be the post ID and then it's gonna, we're going to give it um, is liked. We are also going to give it the current user's uh, ID and that way we can um, I'm just gonna just change the name to user dot uh, It's gonna user is gonna be undefined when user is loading, so I have to add a question mark there. And, and another thing I wanna do is I wanna change this is loading to like loading, and I'm not gonna stop just there because I wanna also make it loading if the user is loading because I don't want the user to be able to like the post if the user object isn't initialized there and the use toggle like won't be able to know which uh, what the user's ID is. So I'm just gonna block the user if either one of the likes are if one of either one of the hooks are still loading. And is liked I has to go above like that. Alright. And then now let's go and define this function, this use toggle like hook. I'm gonna go and make that in posts course let's go and close close out all of the other tabs here and just import use toggle like from hooks slash posts and we have to export that here so export function use toggle like and remember that use toggle like takes in uh, this entire object here this configuration object which um, just just UID here, and what it's gonna do is we're gonna have um, to return. So what 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 did we promise to return again? 
if we look at our code, we can see that we promised to return a toggle like and, and it's loading. So I'm going to have to return a toggle like function and then it's loading state. So it's loading state, I can just make that very easily. Um, use state false. And then we also have to do an asynchronous function called toggle like. And the first thing I'm going to do in this asynchronous function is just set loading to true. And the next thing I want to do is I want to get the document reference to the post document, which I want to modify. So if I'm liking this post, then I want to get a reference to this post's document. So remember that, recall that I'm getting the post's ID in the use, use toggle like configuration object, which means I can just make a document reference to the Firebase document. And I'm going to pass in the database handle as the first argument and the collection name is posts. And then that's the post document ID which is what we're getting from there. And then there's this function from Firebase called update doc, which we can use to update specific fields. In this case, we just want to update the singular field of the likes array. We're not going to touch the date, the ID, the text, and anything else. So we're just going to use update doc. It's an API call, which means we're going to await that. And then the first argument is the document reference. Basically, we're telling update doc which document we're intending to update. And then finally, this is the configuration object, the data object that we're going to pass in. So re remember I, I was just talking about how we're going to update this one singular field called likes. So let's just do likes. And then recall that we're getting is liked from the configuration object. So if is liked is true, we're going to remove the our user's ID. We're going to remove our user's ID, the UID from the document's like array. But if is liked is false, then we're going to add the UID to the array. So um, in Firebase, um, we have this function called array remove and array union, and these are both functions that we can use. Remove is to remove stuff from the array, and union is to add stuff to the array. Basically, you can add arrays to an array and just union the two arrays. But in this case, I'm going to just use a ternary operator again. If is liked is true, if that's true, then I'm going to remove. Otherwise, I'm going to add. So this is what it looks like. And then in the array remove, I'm going to pass in the user's ID. So the same goes for array union. And then once I'm done with updating the document, I'm going to set loading to false. So pretty much we're pretty much done with the use toggle like hook. Um, if you don't like how this looks, you can always just take the object out and you can just do like const config object equals to that. And then we can just do config object or just name it config, I guess. There. Um, and then I'm going to come here and refresh this. And let's go ahead and see if this works. So if I like that, it should become 0 and unlike. That works. And then if I like that, it should be 1, it should be 1. Then, and it basically just works. And you can see that our uh, it automatically adds the likes and the likes to the um, likes array. So if I were to go and log out here and register with a different user, let's do user2 and then user2 at gmail.com, password, uh, oh, it must be six characters long, um, user2121, all right, let's sign up, and we're logged in. So what I'm going to do, you can see here that this like count is one, but the like is not liked because that's liked by another user. So if I click on this, it's going to become two, and that's going to like. So that looks very nice. And we can just go ahead and like. If I log out and just go back in with user test user at gmail.com, you can see the same. Um, yeah, you can see the same thing here. It can just unlike that, it becomes a one. So that's sweet. So next, I'm just going to work on the comments button. And I'm just going <laughs> to take this and just steal the code for the like button and just change some things to make it the comment one. So first things first, let's see how this looks in the browser. And we see that that's the comment button. Uh, looks pretty, pretty similar. And we just have to change the color and the icon to make it match. Um, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the color scheme to teal. And I'm going to give this comment flex eight, some margins. So let's give it margin left equals to two. That way it's further away from the like button. And I'm going to change this. I'm going to just comment out the is loading and on click functionality. 
and the icon instead of doing is liked we want to show um, two different types of comment um, comment icons so if there's no comment it's going to be that empty comment if there are comments it's going to be the failed comments so i'm just going to um, just import some icons here so fa comment and fa regular comment so you can see it's pretty much just like the format of how we import the hearts icons and here uh, let's let's just hard code this for now so just do like um, fa comment and i'm going to change the text here so we don't want to do likes.length anymore we're gonna uh, some, do something like comment com, comments dot length um, but right now we don't have access to this comments object so I'm just gonna hard code this for the time being just add like five now let's make it so that the button when you click on it it brings you to the comments page so I'm gonna do on click here and instead of doing on click I'm just gonna do as equals to the link from react router And uh, we have to add this to, and then we can just add the formatted string to. So our route's gonna look like something like um, protected slash comment slash the post ID. So that's gonna be the post ID, uh, which means we can just do protected here slash comments slash, and then this is going to be the post ID. If I save that and I click on this, you can see it brings us to comments and the post ID and this route doesn't exist. So let's go and create that. I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna go to library routes. Let's do comments and then here, let's do protected, protected comments and then the ID. And here, comments. And the element will be post uh, comment all comments for a specific post ID and uh, I'm also just gonna just make that folder here for now comments and then here we can have index.js and react functional component here we can just call this um, comments if I go to the routes um, instead of putting string here I'll just put like comments so it's going to be from component slash comments and here I'm going to save this and just put the string here and we don't need a react import so if I go back to my home here I click on this it brings us to comments and then um, the comment the comment the post ID but before I go down the rabbit hole of making the, the post page for all, for all the comments I'm gonna go ahead and finish up our actions bar here first by adding that delete button uh, to the right side of the post so let's close that first and I'm gonna close mm, the routes and just close and everything that's not needed um, alright let's just get rid of that and we can leave this loading in all right i'm going to take the icon button here just clone it and just put it here and instead of this icon we can just go back to react icons and just search for a trash so i'm going to take this trash icon or we can just use that um doesn't matter um then we can import that too and then here I'm going to use that icon instead and let's change the color scheme back to red because I want the red trash can to look dangerous right if I if I just did like teal and just so showed you what this does it's gonna be it's gonna be there it's not gonna look very threatening so let's go and make it red that looks a, a bit more dangerous to click on and then I'm gonna make it all the way to the right side which means we can just do margin left equals to auto and they'll automatically give us all the margin that we need or you could always just use a chakra separator but I'm just gonna use margin left because it's easier this way and uh, we have to take away this as link and this two and then we have to change the is loading and then we have to make the functionality to delete post so let's just say that we have a function called delete post and we can just call on click to call the delete post function which of course doesn't exist yet but we can always 
uh, make another hook for that. So we're gonna have so many hooks by the end of this tutorial. I'm gonna make const delete post and then we're gonna get is loading. So is loading, let's just rename this to delete loading. And here down, I'm gonna just do is loading is delete loading equals to use delete post and then here we have to pass in the ID of the post that we're gonna delete which is gonna come from here and just check if everything is all right then you can save that it's gonna give us an error because use delete post doesn't exist yet we can uh, we can import that here use delete post and then we have to go ahead and actually write that function export function use delete post that takes in an ID that's right expects us to return an is loading state as well as a delete a delete post function to call before I actually write this um, delete post function I'm just I'm just gonna uh, finish up my comments page first and you'll understand why later because when we delete a post there's gonna be a comments collection if I just go and show you the collection in my test Firebase uh, console you can see that we have our comment section and if we have comments in a specific post and we delete the post document without deleting the comments uh, documents that are linked to that post the comments are just gonna exist for forever in our cloud Firebase store and it's not gonna be linked to any valid post because the ID of that post that was uh, supposedly be that the comments supposedly belong to is now gone because the post is now deleted but the comments just floating out here so I'm gonna just finish up this use delete post hook later on after I'm done with the comments page. For now, I'm just gonna make this an empty function and I'm gonna just make the is loading state use loading false. There we go. Uh, sorry, <laughs> use state. So let's go ahead and start working on our comments page. So here, instead of just returning um, this div, I'm gonna return a box and we're gonna just align everything here in this box to be centered and then we give it a, a padding top of 50 and then the first thing I'm gonna do is if I go to my example here so in a comments page the first thing we're gonna have is this post card uh, on the very top of the comments page so let's go ahead and add that post and it's going to give us an error most likely because if I go here it's going to give us an error post is undefined because the post expects a post data object which then destructures the text um, so we have to go ahead and fetch our post but how do you fetch our post because right now we don't have a post we, we, we can't pass in any props here that says like post ID because this is a top this is a top level um, component that react router is rendering so you're gonna see that the post ID is actually in the parameters in the URL. And if we go back to our library and routes, you can see the, the route for our comments has this back part that's a dynamic um, URL, dynamic parameter, and that's the ID. So we're gonna use the React Router's use params hook um, inside of here. We can just const params equals to use params right and we can just console the params to the we can just log the params to the console to show you what that is uh, I'm gonna just comment this out because it's giving us issues and just refresh this just look at the console you can see that we have our params here we have the ID which is whatever if I change the route here and we call this post ID and refresh this you can see it becomes post ID here in this object instead of the ID. So the name of this property in this object is uh, dependent on what name you put in the configuration string here for the path in the routes. So I'm just going to leave it as ID and now we can destructure the ID from the params and that's going to be our post ID. But because our post component here is expecting an entire post data object and not just the ID, we're going to have to somehow get, we have to fetch our post uh, based on this ID. Let's just make another yet another hook for this uh, export function use post and here that's gonna be the post ID and just do const 
Um, so I'm just gonna be using the use collection data hook from React hook form again. We can just do that, and like uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to make our query variable here. So const q equals to, and I'm gonna just take out error. So const q equals to. Um, let's see, we're gonna have to use get a document reference, and we're gonna pass in the database handle, the name of the collection, and the ID of the document. Then we can just return. We can just return our uh, posts and is loading. Then let's go and use post const post and then is loading. So I, this is supposed to be singular uh, because it's a singular post. It's just one document. It's not. A collection it's not a bunch of documents so it's just one we have a different we have a different hook for uh, the plural of posts to fetch all of the posts and this is just one post so two different hooks for two different purposes and then I'm going to just go and pass in post equals to post and then just say if is loading then return loading dot 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 and then we have to pass in the ID to the use post arguments because uh, it, it remember it's expecting us to give it an ID for the document so let's refresh this um, it's gonna load for quite a bit and we'll see if it works whoa 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 we're getting an infinite loop here all right so this this, this counter was going crazy and I um, I think we're having an infinite loop somewhere in our code which means something is not quite right just gonna do a quick check here and there we go this is the issue so we're using the use collection data hook inside of use post but remember we're just trying to get a singular document from a singular document reference so we should be using use document data and not use collection data <laughs> so that should fix it and if I go back and refresh hopefully we'll get that infinite loop error thing again so if I go to comments and we, we get our post and that's working very nicely so the next things that we're going to add is the add new comment section like this add new comment section and also the list of all of the existing comments so back here in the um, comments page component I'm going to just add a new a new component here under the post card component and we're going to call this new comment and of course we have to make that new comment.js file um, so here I have to import new comment and because the tutorial is already going it's been going on for quite a while I'm just gonna paste uh, all of the UI code here so I don't have to go through step by step on how to make the UI um, but the functionality is not here yet so I can just save this we have like a box and we have just like containers inside of containers to style them and we have a form that doesn't have an unsubmit we have an input here uh, and the button and that's all that we have if I go back to the browser and refresh you see that we now have that additional comment section um, it doesn't do anything though if I just hit enter it's gonna do the default form action and it's gonna refresh the page and then add that question mark uh, in the back of this uh, the URL path and so that's that's just the default form behavior in HTML so what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna add an avatar so if you see, um, if you look at our demo here, we have an avatar here that we can click on and goes to the profile. And that's, we have to add that to the left side of our comment bar. And recall that in our profile folder, we have that avatar component that we can just reuse here. So avatar, then we can save that. It's gonna give us an error because avatar expects you to give it a, a user at the very least. You can omit giving it the size but it'll just default in XL we might just uh, make it uh, small or extra s so we have to give it a user and um, we're gonna get the current user so const user we've done this a million times so I'm just gonna just speed run through this so use auth and then um, so is loading is just there let's just put the user object in here I'm just thinking if we should uh, return loading if the user is loading. Let's just say if loading, just return loading. Because we don't want to be able to write new comments if we don't know who the current user is. So, I'm going to refresh. 
and you can see that it's kind of huge right now that's why we have our size override property there um, do size equals to like an XS um, that's a bit too small maybe SM now again if you are following along with this tutorial and you just saw me paste a bunch of code in here you can always go to the link in the description there's gonna be a github repository where you can just go and look at the completed code and just copy all of the UI components in and uh, I'm gonna just explain why we have this autocomplete equals to off thing here because this is a form and this is an, a text input inside of the form and if you don't have autocomplete equals to off it's just gonna treat it as any other input just like um, the input for the username or email and the browser is going to try to autocomplete whatever uh, it has in its history so if you've typed user at gmail.com in this in the text input before it's going to try to autocomplete um, that email which we don't want because this is this is a comment section and we don't <laughs> we're not intending to put like um, email na uh, email addresses and passwords in here so just that's just a uh, for it to turn off the autocomplete and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use React hook form to register this form and uh, override the default unsubmit function. So as usual, you can do register equals to use form and have to import that. And I'm going to we're going to register this input field by using a spread operator and um, just text. And uh, the only the only val validation I'm going to do is just make it required. And and let's just do handle submit here and we have to import that so handle submit and also reset because we want to reset the we want to reset this text after we made a new comment we want to make it uh, blank again after we uh, submit so handle submit and it's going to take in a function here and let's just call this um add comment and we have to make that add comment um, that add comment thing the function okay so let's just function maybe just call it handle add comment instead there um and then let's um, handle add comment oh yeah we have to put the parentheses just reset so to add a comment we're gonna have to call a something like um use add post but it's for comments so it's gonna be something like add comment like that and then it's going to come from a function uh, from a hook so we have to make our own custom hook to add comments so I'm going to go to the hooks folder and make a new file for comments.js export function use add comment and then here as usual we can have a loading state then we're going to return this loading as well as an add comment function that we have to make so async function add comment first thing I'm gonna do in this add comment function is of course as usual we're gonna set the loading to true the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this set doc function from Firestore to add a document to our comments collection so if I go to my comments here you can see that uh, in my example Firebase console you can see a comment it's gonna have date which is the date added the date of the comment and then the ID of the comment which is gonna be the same as the documents ID and then we have the post ID so which post does this comment belong to and then we have the text which is pretty much the content of the, uh, the, the comment and the UID is the person the user who posted this comment so let's first make that ID and we have to do id equals to uid v4 we can import that from a firebase slash util and that's just going to let us generate uh, an id and this is going to be an api call so we have to await this and then uh, let's have a doc ref here and then we have to make that doc ref later and then this is going to be the object the data that we're going to enter into this document so uh, i'm going to get the data from the arguments here the parameter uh, comment and then we can use the spread operator to spread the comment and then in, we can inject the ID into this uh, document so now it's gonna ask us to make this document reference um, which we're just gonna do with um, doc and then the first argument is always the database handle we have to import that and then the comments collection and the ID of the document 
And then once we're done with that, we're going to have to toast, um, which we have to import. So const toast equals to use toast. And let's do toast. I'm just going to um, add the title, comment, add it. And then let's have the status of success um, is closable true and then position to be top. And then let's have the duration be 5,000. And then once we're done with all of that, we can finally set loading to false. Okay, so if I go back here, I can come and add the argument that this add comment um, function is expecting. So we can add um, the text and we're, we're gonna get the text from the data object, which is gonna be passed to us from the handle submit function, which is gonna pass the data object into the handle add comment. So we can do data.text. And we also have to include the post ID. And we're going to get the post ID from the props here. And I have to go back to the comments here. And let's add, you know what, let's just pass in the post as a whole object. And then here we can just get the post object. And then we can destructure the uh, ID. Let's rename this to post ID uh, from the post object. And then here, let's just do post ID. So let us check what other information do we need to put into our comment document. So we're going to have to add the date and then the UID. So I'm going to just do that. So date is date.now and then UID will be user.id. And I have to, of course, get the add comment function and then the is loading become comment loading use add comment we have to import that come here and save this and just import use add comment so the thing is um, this text field is the only thing that has to be in this handle add comment function because it's the only thing that's reading from the data object this post id we can actually just put it here we can just put post id uh, and then just go to the hook and just get the post ID. Um, and we can just get rid of that here. And the date.now doesn't even have to be here because we can just inject the date from this use add comment um, hook. So let's inject our post ID and then our date. Let's just do const date equals to um, date.now. And then the user ID, um, we can also just put that here. So UID is user.id. And so the only thing that's left in here is the text. And we don't even need um, that object. In that case, we can just add comment and just give it the text. And then here um, in this add comment function, we no longer have to use the, the spread operator like that. We just do text um, there, text. We save that and hopefully this is not too confusing. Uh, I'm going to go and make this loading state uh, apply to the button. So comment loading and also I don't want the user to be able to comment before the user is uh, the, the auth user is done loading because then the comment won't have an owner user ID. So I'm going to block them from doing that. And let's see if this works. Uh, of course, it's not going to show up here because we don't have the comments list component yet. But if I type this is a new comment here and add comment, we should get the toast saying comment added. And the toast is coming from our use add comment hook. You can see the toast there. And then if I go to my Firebase console, I should be able to go and look at the comments collection here and see that this is a new comment up here. If I have another comment and hit enter you should see another comment appear and so our add comment functionality is now completed all right next we're gonna go and write code to fetch the actual comments from the firestore database and make it show up here right right underneath our add new comment component so to do that i'm going to make this comment list dot js and it's going to be a react functional component and then we're going to include this comment list here inside, just right below our new comment component. Uh, it's, we don't need to include the post in there. 
just yet. All right, here and in this component, um, I'm just gonna pull this up in the browser and see what it looks like. So here, comment list, and just in here, we're gonna just um, fetch all of the comments from our Firestore database. And as usual, we're gonna make our own custom hook for this, and we're gonna use the use collection data hook from React Hook Form. In the comments.js file here, I'm gonna export the uh, export function called use comments. And then here, uh, we're gonna fetch all of the comments, but first we have to know the ID of the post that we're fetching the comments for, because we don't wanna just get every single comment. And we just wanna find comments that belong to this post, this specific post with this specific post ID. So we can construct our query variable here. And then the first, um, I have to import that, yeah. And the first um, argument it's, is gonna be the collection reference. And then we can pass it. We can pass in the database handle, the name of the collection, which is going to be comments. And then we can use the where clause, as you can see, um, the way GitHub Copilot has recommended me to do this is the right way. We're just going to use where. And we're going to check where the post ID matches up. So we want to check where this post ID field matches the post ID that was provide, provided to us in the arguments of the use comments hook. And then I'm just going to save that and let's do const um, comments. I, I'm just going to check if there's another hook like that in here, posts maybe. I'm just going to take this line, just paste it, paste it in our comments hook. So let's paste it here. And then we have to import use collection data. So if you guys were, um, if you guys have been looking through the documentation and you see this use collection hook, um, I don't really use this hook. I use the use collection data hook more, and that's because um, use collection, the use collection hook just returns to you the snapshot, right? And then use collection data helps us convert that snapshot into a, into a data variable before uh, it returns the value to us. And using the use collection data hook, you can also you still have access to the snapshot. Um, variables just at the last position of the list and you can also use collection once basically use collection data will it, it's real time so every time every time you update uh, you update the information in this database in uh, in the console it will automatically show up in the front end and we don't have to do anything to manually refresh the data it's uh, in real time so that's why I like to use this hook so much and I'm going to change this just to comments it's loading error um, I'm just gonna take out the error variable because I never use that anyway. Um, if you if you're building an app and you want the best practices, you have to ideally you would take the error variable and like detect if there's an error, and you want to warn the user if there's an error because um, you don't want in in an actual production environment you don't want your program just crashing on uh, actual users who are using your production ready application. So now I'm just gonna return comments and is loading. So I gave that whole speech about um, Handling errors, I'm just gonna, um, for best practices sake, I'm just gonna do if error, then you just wanna throw that error. So now that we have this use comments hook built, we can go back to comments list and we can just implement the hook here. So comments, comments is loading equals use comments. And then we have to somehow pass in the ID here, which we can just, we can just get the post and then just destructure the ID from the, the props. So ID equals to post, and then we have to give the post to the comments list. Have to import use comments. And then um, we can just do a simple dot map here. So we can just comments dot map. And then here we, we're gonna take each individual um, I actually don't need the curly braces, just comments.map. And we're gonna take each individual comment and we will just return a string. Uh, and then we can just do the text. Or maybe I'll just, I'll just do comment.text. And, and then we have to just change this to ID. And let's see how that looks like in our front end. So I'm gonna refresh this. And it's gonna do uh, undefined. So, if it's loading, return loading, and let's refresh that. 
so that it works. And then it, I just want to make this on a new line. So I, I, I'll just um, do a line break here. Let's make a React fragment. And here we can just wrap that and just do like a simple BR. So um, this is a new comment, another comment. If I add another comment, yet another comment. So you can see that that uh, unpredictable behavior shows up again, where I add a comment, it's going gonna, it's gonna to randomly go into random positions in the comments list. And that's why we want to order the comments here by the date, because we when we're making comments, remember that we're adding the date, the timestamp for when this comment was created. And that is from our comments hook. So you can see that we inject the date property here inside of our use add comment uh, hook and it's going to just inject the date so we can just make use of that date property. So I'm going to go to the comments hook here and then in the query, instead of just fetching uh, all of the comments where this clause is met, we, we can also just order by. So order by and that's going to come from um, Firestore. So order by here from Firebase slash Firestore, we can import that. And then let's order by date. And then um, recall that in the posts here, we have, uh, we have order by. And uh, I was ordering the date by de descending order, meaning the newest post will be on the top of the list. But now for comments, I'm going to build this kind of like um, the YouTube comment section. So basically, I'm going to have the newest comment at the bottom and then the oldest comment on the top. So instead of just doing date descending, I'm going to do date ascending here. And we can save that. And then now if I go back here and I refresh, and this is exactly why we, had to, uh, we have to always catch errors. Like if I just didn't catch this error here in our uh, comment, use comments hook, and I just refresh the page, it's going to crash in our face. And we don't know what the error is because it just says cannot read properties of undefined reading map. And you, you, it's really hard to debug because you don't know where the problem is. But if I had this, if error, throw error, it's going to throw the error and we can catch that and it gives us a more comprehensive description of the error and tells you that this query requires an index. I can create the index here. So I'm just going to copy that. And the reason why this error is uh, happening is because I'm using this uh, order by and the where, the where clause and the order by clause, which uh, requires an index. And I just have to make the index by going to the link and we're going to see how that looks like in just a second. So I have to make a, com a composite index that has a post ID of ascending and date of ascending. And I can just, I can just create index. And sometimes um, indexes can help you save uh, money and in terms of pricing when you're deploying your app and you're trying to scale your app uh, in Firebase. So I'm just going to let this run for a second and then I'll resume uh, the recording when this is done building. And the building is now done and the index is enabled. So that means that if I come to my app and refresh this, theoretically it should work and it should always add the newest comment to the bottom. Uh, so newest comment goes to the bottom, newest two, newest three, and that works perfectly because our order by clause is now fully functioning. So now instead of just putting all, all the comments as text here, I'm going to actually make that comments, uh, that comment component here. So in our comments, I'm going to have to increase the size of this so I can read the name of the files. So comment.js. Now this is a single, a singular comment and we can make a React functional component for that. And let's export default function comment, and we can return something here. So what we're going to return is a bunch of containers with boxes and flexes from Chark UI, which I'm just going to paste in here. Uh, don't get intimidated by seeing the amount of code here. It's just mostly just styling code. Um, you can just take this from the link in the description. I have my GitHub repository. You can just copy and paste it. And just import all of these things. So basically it's just paddings and margins and max widths and text align and border color and uh, yeah, you don't have to worry too much about the styles. You can always just um, restyle this yourself. So I'm going to save this and in the comment here, we're going to take in a comment data object and then we can destructure some information from this comment object. So um, I'm first going to 
go to our comments list. Um, so let's just close this. Okay, and close that, and I'm just going to go to my comments list here. Instead of just returning this comments.map, I'm going to actually return like a box from Chakra UI, and inside of the box, we're going to have comments.map, and for each comment, um, we're going to return a component in here, and we, that component is basically the comment component we just made, so comment from dot slash comment. And then, so let's make this comment component. So comment the and self closing, and we're gonna pass in the comment in here, like that. And it's still giving me this error because I think I formatted this wrong somehow. Mm. I might just just redo the entire map. So. Oh no, actually, I, f I figured out what went wrong. So we need to wrap this in curly braces for it to read it as, read it as JavaScript. And then um, if I do this, it's we're going to get an error here from React.js because React doesn't like it when we don't give each child a unique key prop when we're doing map. So we have to pass the key. We can just do comment.id because we know that each comment is going to have an ID. And there we go. If I count the number of comments here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I go to the back end here and just count this as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we do have seven and seven, although the text doesn't match up. Um, but that's because we have to come and fix all of the hard coding here. Um, so first of all, I'm going to change this text from this is a comment because that's just going to make it hard coded. I'm just going to get the text and destructure the text from the comment object that we're being passed uh, from the props. So I'm going to refresh that, and you can see that the text updates. So this is a new comment, another comment, and uh, I'm just going to reset this. Let's reset this collection, just delete the entire comment section. It's going to be gone. Um, if I refresh this, it should be gone. And then we can just comment one, and there, there, there there's our comment. And here, instead of just hard coding the test user, what I want to do here is I want to do the username. And uh, I can't get the username from the comment uh, object because the comment object doesn't have a, a, a field that stores the, the username of the user that made this comment. Instead, it stores the user's um, ID. <laughs> and I'm just starting to realize we, we may have just forgotten, completely forgotten about that part because I don't see a user ID here. So if I go back to my comments hook, the use add comment hook and um, so basically in our new comment section we're we're passing in the user ID to this use add comment this use add comment hooks configuration object but we forgot to receive that here we're just taking the post ID for, we completely completely forgot about the UID so let's just get that and just inject it here as well um, so now if I go and delete this comment and I go make a new comment here new comment we should be able to go to the back end and just see our user id show up there we go and finally now that we have our user id um, we can go ahead and get the uid from the comment object here and then we're going to convert this user id to our useful the useful information that we want which is the user the user object to pass into our avatar because we're going to put our avatar here and then remember that the avatar object is expecting a user data object because just let's just go back to our avatar it's gonna be in profile avatar and it expects that user object so let's go ahead and give it that by using our use user hook so the use user hook exists in the in this file so the use user hook can help us convert the user id into the user object by fetching the data from the fire fire firestore database so const user is user uh, just is loading use user UID and then we're gonna we're gonna import this all right and then if is loading return loading all right and then we're gonna pass in the user object here and here in this box uh, we can't forget to include the user dot user name so there we go our comment is now functioning 
and what we can do is just use our avatars size override prop to override the size let's make it something like SM um, there we go um, but if I I'll just want to try MD and see if that works All right maybe SM is better we can get the date object from the comment um, just like how we did it for much like how we did it for the post here um, we got the header here we used the format distance to now and we imported that from date FNS and then we just format distance distance to now ago so let's just copy that and just paste it here and then we have to import format distance to now and date has to be uh, destructured from the comment object you can save that and you can see three min three minutes ago and I'm gonna make a new comment that's that's gonna be less than a minute ago and then there we go less than a minute ago that works now before we move on to the next section I just want to have a little bit of fun with our uh, the app that we currently have I'm gonna try to go to the dashboard and just use a different window uh, it's gonna kick us back to the login screen because we're not logged in in this uh, window and we can just make a new user new user to and then new user at gmail.com test um, password this is register and we are gonna see all of our the posts that we made I'm gonna go to this newest post and then here we can type um, this is a comment from a different user and if I go back to my test users account and you can see that a new user too uh, appears uh, but one thing I'm gonna change about this is I don't want that to be just the username I want it to be the button that we can click on it'll link us to the user's profile uh, which means I'm just gonna come here and just do username button and username button expects a user a user object so let's give the user equals to user and then now we can click on the users and it'll link us to the profile which doesn't exist yet and we're going to make that in just a second another thing you're going to notice is that uh, i'm just going to close this here another thing you're going to notice is that all of the comments have all five as the indicator of how many comments there are and we have to just fix that um so um let's go to the comment here no actually it's going to be in the post in the header so um let me find for that com oh no, it's actions sorry my bad so actions and five so that's where we hot coded in the number of comments so in here I'm gonna go ahead and fat use the comments the use the use comments hook that we just made here to count the number of comments um, let's go and do const comments is loading will be comments loading equals to use comments and then here is we're gonna get the ID from the post which is just destructured from the post object and that's all good so we can import that and the is loading button here um, we don't have to care about that all right so let's just return the comments dot length so this is this works and we can just make sure it works here if we go back to our dashboard you can see that there's four comments here there's zero zero here if I can if I added one comment here it becomes one and that works but if you were scaling this project up and you want to uh, make uh, you want to do this more efficiently and reduce the cost that will charge to your Firebase project uh, you can create an index just like uh, how we created that index uh, for our order by for ordering the date you can make another index and use the use the dot count method in Firebase just to count the, the length of an array inside of Firestore without actually having to fetch all of the comments because we don't have to we don't have to know the contents or the text of the comments we don't know we don't need to know the users who made these comments we just need to know the length so there's a better way to do that but I'm just going to leave it like that for now and here um, let's see I'm going to change the icon here because we don't want to just hard code this icon we want to just see if the comments dot length is zero then we are going to do this regular one if not we're going to make a filled comment icon show up to indicate that there's there are comments so let's see if that works so there we have a filled comment and for the zero comments is just a blank comment icon and that's great I want to give the users the ability to delete their own comments but not other people's comments so I'm logged in as test user right now I want to be able to delete my own comments here 
So let's go to our comment.js and just add that icon button here. And then we're gonna give um, this size to be SM. We should see our icon button show up. And we want the icon button to be all the way to the right. So we can just margin left equals to auto and it should push it all the way to the right. And then I want the I want this to have the trash icon. Let's just get that from the post here. So in our post we have no it's sorry, it's in the it's in the actions uh, file again. So here there FA trash. Let's just import that. So import FA trash from React icon slash FA. So I believe FA stands for font awesome or something, but I'm not sure about that. And um, we can go to our icon button and just give icon equals to FA trash. And we should see the trash. I want that to be red and I don't want the back I don't want a button to have a background like that. So first of all, color scheme red. So that's red, and then we shall give the variant equal to ghost and it becomes a ghost and i want this to be rounded so we can do is round and there we go so that's much nicer and the, the next thing we can do is um just check if this is in the right position uh test all right so that's pretty much just like our example and then what we can do is we can go ahead and add on click so in the on click, I'm just gonna make it run, make it execute a delete comment function, and we have to make that function. I'm not gonna make that function within this comment component. Instead, I'm gonna put put it in the hook and just call the function from the hook. So let's just export function use delete comment ID. And that's the ID of the comment, and then we're gonna return delete comment and this loading. So here we can just delete comment and is loading to be delete loading equals to now I just want to name this better so I'm going to see if uh, we can change this is loading so is loading will be user loading just copy that so delete loading equals to use co use use delete comment and then here uh, it expects us to give it an ID the ID of the comment that we want to delete and um, we're gonna just destructure that here from the comment object, the comment object as well. So just ID there, and let's give this button here and is loading to be delete loading, and then here in the comments hook, let's go and make this function here. So async function delete comment, and then um, we need the is loading state is loading set loading. All right. And here, the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is set loading to true, and then we wanna make our document reference uh, to delete that comment. So const q equals to document, and then it takes in database comments ID, and then we can just await um, delete doc, delete doc, I believe, and we can delete q, or rather doc ref instead of just a query so it's just just a doc ref to a single document and then once we're done we can set loading to false I also want to just toast the user to let them know that um, their comment was deleted successfully um, so let me go ahead and look for this snippet so I can paste it use delete comment here and just put the toast here there we go and then we can just const toast equals to use toast and then that should be pretty much it so if we go back to our web app we can uh, so that's not that's not right because we shouldn't be able we shouldn't be allowed to delete the other users comments so I'm just gonna make a check here and we have to check for if the current user is the owner of this comment so how do we get a current user we have to go ahead and use the use auth hook so const uh, user let's call this auth user is loading to be auth loading and then equals to use auth we have we have to import that and then we uh, let's just say if user loading or auth loading or we don't even have to do that we can just do it down here if not auth loading and 
the auth user dot id is equals to the uid because the uid is the, the the uid the id of the user who owns this comment if that's the case then we are going to just return this icon button and there we go we see that um the icon button for new user 2 disappears because because that's not our comment so let's try to see if this works i can delete that and says comment deleted though we would probably want to do um, a, con a confirmation alert to see if the user actually meant to click on that button now you could always use a, a check or ui modal like you can just you can just make a modal like that and say oh you sure you want to delete that and then say yes and it actually delete but i'm just for the sake of saving time for this video i don't want to make this so long we can just do a simple javascript prompt like that and that takes that saves us so much time so i'm going to go to the comments hook here and delete comment so um here just right under delete comment and set loading to true what i'm going to do is um just do const res equals to window dot confirm and we can confirm are you sure are you sure you want to delete this comment and then we'll just say if res is true if the response is true then we, we do all of this otherwise we just don't do anything there we go and then we can just click on that it says are you sure you want to delete this comment we click cancel and it doesn't do anything i want to fix that the loading thing though so i guess we can just set loading to true inside of this if statement and just refresh this so if i click on that i say cancel it doesn't go and delete the comment but if i say okay then they'll delete the comment now before we move on to the very very last section of this uh, i don't know how many hour long tutorial i just want to take a moment to thank all of you who are still with me here and stuck to the very end and uh, it's been a long journey making all of these features and i just I'm very excited to finish off this last part and that is the user profile page so if i go and edit my profile we can see that it says user profile for a specific id and that's just because we have that hard coded here in our user profile route in the routes.js file so let's go and make our index.js file in our profile component and then we can make a react functional component uh, and then i'm just gonna replace this with the profile component that we just made and we have to import that. So profile and let's make this profile and then we should see index and that's our index.js file here. So I'm gonna take a bunch of code and just put it in here as well. It's just a bunch of containers. You can see stacks and flexes and a horizontal stacks and just text. And I'm just going to save this and show you what this looks like. It's just, a, it's just a basic skeleton of the UI. It doesn't have any functionality yet. So we're going to have to insert our avatar there. We're going to have, we're going to, have to count the number of posts this user made. And then the likes here, we can, we can obviously go and make fun functionality to count the number of likes this user has received on their posts. But I'm just going to leave this as a big to-do here and leave that up to you. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this tutorial just because it'll drag on forever. And then we're gonna just show them when they joined, when this user joined. And also we're gonna include a list of all of the posts that this specific user made. And we're gonna make a button here that to allow the user to change their avatar and upload their own file for their avatars. So here the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this uh, ID from the back part of the URL. This is gonna be the user's ID. And we can do that using the use params hook from React Router. So we can destructure ID from the use params hook and we can log that to the console and we have to import use params. So I, I can refresh that and you can see that the ID should show up here in the console. And that's because in our routes file, we have our profile route to accept a dynamic ID at the end of the path. So now that we have the ID, we can uh, we can first do our post our post list. So in post and posts list, you can see that the post list accepts a posts um, prop, and that's basically just all of the posts, an, an array of posts that we're gonna render in our post list. So post list, and then we can just add the posts here. And do already have an existing hook in our posts. 
a file here called um, look for it let's look for it use posts but this is not what we want to be using uh, as it is right now because it's going to return to us every single post that's in the firestore database and that's not what we want because we want to filter this post down to only show us the posts um, of this specific user so what we can do here is we can just add an optional argument an optional parameter here called uid and this is going to be the uh, it, this is going to default to null and so if we don't provide any arguments to the use posts hook, it's just going to assume that you want every single post. And if you do provide an, a user ID, and you're just going to give you the posts that this particular user made. So um, here, we can, you can just modify the query variable and make that dependent on the UID. So if UID exists, and we're going to use a ternary operator. So if the UID exists, we're going to do a query here. If not, we're just going to fall back to this default query. So I'm just going to copy this entire query and just put it here. And the only difference it's going to make, we're still, we're still going to order it by date descending and we're still going to get that from the posts collection. But the only difference is that I'm going to add a where clause to specify that I want where the, uh, I want all the documents inside of this posts collection where the, U, U, the, U, the UID field is equal to um, the UID that's passed to us here. Um, so if I go back to my Firestore database and I just show you our data here in the posts, you can see that the post documents are going to have this field, this UID field for um, the user who posted this uh, specific post. So here, what we can do is we can do const um, posts and then is loading equals to use post. And then we can pass in so we're not going to pass in UID like that because um, we don't have a UID variable in this function. Uh, but we, what we do have is the ID, and the ID is basically the, UI, the user ID, the UID that we're getting from the top part of the path here. So I'm just doing, I'm just going to do ID. Let's import that, and then let's just do. Um, let me think about this. All right, I'll just do it like that. All right, if um, if it's loading, let's just call this post loading. And if post loading is true, then we're gonna we're gonna uh, just return text loading. Posts are loading. If not, we're just gonna if the loading is false, then we can just return our post list. Let's um, see. If uh, it, it throws us an error again. That's because we're um, using the order by and the where clauses together, and that's why we have to make an index. So let's just do this thing again, and let's just go and create this composite index, and just let it build in the background for for a bit before uh, I continue the recording. Okay, I've been sitting here waiting for a while, and it seems to be done and enabled. So I should be able to just go back to my app and just hard refresh this. And there we go. That's our post list right there. Uh, so if I go to the home page, you can see that there's going to be... Oh, so apparently that's not. I'm going to just make a post that is not posted by this test user. And we won't see that show up in the test user's profile. So let's just log in um, with a different user. Um, I don't remember the, the, the credentials of any of the users I've made. So I'm just going to make a user every single time. Um, let's call this... Um, user2 at gmail.com password123 um, what we already have user2 alright I guess we can just log in password123 there we go so if I go to my, my user2 2121's profile we should see no posts because we, we haven't make, made a single post yet if I did new user2's post and just posted that and we go to the profile we should now see that appear and if we, if we go to our test users profile, we will not see the new users post despite it being present here in the main dashboard. So let us go back to the profile and what I'm going to do here is now insert the avatar. Um, so the avatar doesn't exist yet, but if we just import and reuse our avatar component, I have to import that. Um, so import avatar and avatar expects a user object right here takes in a user and a size so I'm gonna just make the size 2xl and I'm gonna give it the user 
and we don't have we don't currently have that user object yet so we can always just get the user object with our use user hook very handy so const user mm, is loading to be user loading equals to use user and then the id which is going to be the user's id which we're just getting from the parameters of um, react router so let's import that and then we can just pass in the user like that and if the user is loading just let's just do like um if user loading then just return loading and there we have our avatar and next up i'm gonna make that username show up right beside the avatar there by replacing this at username here text we can make our chakra ui text component and just do username so user dot username and we can see how it looks like uh, so it looks pretty small you can change the font size to 2xl and there we go and finally let's work on the posts and the joined so i am going to go over here and replace the 10 with um, posts dot length and let's go ahead and refresh this so we do see that we have six posts here and if i try to delete a post which i obviously can't because we completely forgot to implement the delete post function here we just made the hook and just left it and forgot about it so uh, we'll do that before we end the tutorial and then so we have six posts here if i went and deleted another post i just want to make sure this post belongs to this user here um uh Okay, you know, let's just look for this new post and just delete that. It should be somewhere here. New post. All right, there it is. Let's go ahead and delete this document. So if I do that, you can see that the posts, the post count drops to five. And then now let's deal with this joined field. So um, it, instead of just hard coding when the user joined, we can just do user.date. And that's basically the date that we're getting from this user object. And then um, it's going to give us that timestamp, which is not very useful to know because humans can't read that very well. So let's just uh, conveniently, we have our date FNS library that we've installed, which provides us with a format function from date FNS. So we can just use the format function here. So we can format the user.date and give it a format string to tell it how we want uh, the date to look like. So I'm just going to do month and then year. And so we indeed see our month and year show up. So that's great. And we can now uh, finalize our user, pro our user profiles uh, by adding that edit avatar button on the top right corner. If this, if this is our profile, if we're looking at someone else's profile, for example, uh, if we look at the new, user, new user's profile, it shouldn't show us that button. Uh, much like this change avatar thing. We're gonna click on that and it should give us a model to let us select image files to change. So I'm gonna go back to the code for the profile component here and let us go and add that button right here. I'm just gonna paste the button in and just call, uh, just import this. Let's do that, save that. I'm gonna show you how that looks like. So it's gonna appear up here in the top right corner. It's basically uh, positioned absolutely. It's gonna be posi positioned in the top right corner and we have the teal col color theme. But this button isn't gonna do anything right now because you can click on that, but it doesn't have an on-click prop. So let's go ahead and make that on-click prop. So on-click, so what this button should do when you click it, it should open up the modal much like this um, button over here, this open modal button, it should open up a modal that we can use to set our profile picture. Um, so basically, we, just, we can just use this use disclosure hook that um, Chakra UI provides us um, and just do const is open on close and on open as well. So on open equals to use disclosure and then here we just do on open so basically you can just use this on open function just call that to open the modal and then the is open variable is going to update and and that's what we're going to be passing into our modal uh, component so let's make that modal component within added profile.js 
and we are going to receive um, is open here. Let's just pass is open to our model. So edit profile is open equals to is open. And that it's ba that, that's basically the variable that we're getting from this use disclosure hook. And then I'm going to go to my edit profile here and paste in a bunch of code and just ignoring the import statements if I can um, find a way to collapse that. So no, apparently not. So basically in this model, or I'm, all I'm doing is I'm going to um, check if the model is open or not and just get that from the prop. I also have to get on close from the props, which means I have to pass that in here too. So in the edit profile, we need on close. So why this edit profile model requires this on close function is because the model is going to have a close button and that's the close button and uh, to be able to close the model it requires access to that on close uh, function uh, which this close button will trigger. And so we have our header here that says edit profile and then we have our avatar which we have to insert and then we have our label and we have our input which does nothing at the moment because we have an empty arrow function in the onChange uh, prop. So I'm just going to change this to teal and let's go and try clicking on a button. So we click on that, we get this edit profile and uh, we don't have an avatar right now. We don't have that preview avatar so we, we're going to have to fix that. Let's take that and replace it with our avatar component and the avatar component takes in the user object so we have to pass in the user which we're gonna have to write the hook for so user is loading equals to use user uh, actually it should be use auth and let's import use auth if we can and um, so let's just return false to return loading if it's loading and so I should be able to go back to our application change avatar and we do see the avatar there and let's let's try to select a file here it's not going to do anything right now but I'm just going to show you what it does so we have all of these pictures we can just click on that it does nothing just tells um, just sets sets the input but it isn't controlled by react state so react doesn't know that you've selected a file here so in order to make this input a controlled input um, we can just change the on change function to be handle change by the way uh, notice that i have this accept equals image slash asterisk here so that we are only accepting image files in this input and uh, users can't just uh, like upload text files they can they can always just um just change their HTML in their browser and just override this and just hack through it. So uh, at the end of the day, you might want to implement a secure checking system to check and uh, like a serverless function to check the file types as well as compress and optimize the images before, uh, like resize the images before you upload them to your storage. But I'm not going to do that in this video because I'm just going to make this as basic as possible. And uh, I'm just going to make fun a function here. Uh, called handle change it's going to take in an event and we can just log to the console the event or target the files um, so if I go and choose a file here let's just you can see that it uh, outputs a file list type object it's going to have a file and all of the properties of the file all right so uh, I'm not going to log this to co the console. In, in, instead, I'm going to set this file to a state variable. And I can call like a setter function called set file or something, and like do e dot target dot files zero. Now this function doesn't exist yet, but we're going to know that we have to make we're going to have to make a hook to update the user's avatar. So let's just go to our user's um, hook here and just export a function called use update avatar and here we can return a function to set file and then here we are just gonna do const set file equals to use update avatar and then here the set file function is gonna set the file in a state variable within this hook so we can just do const file set file equals to use state and we have to import use state so now we have the file inside of this use update avatar um, 
hook and what we can do is we can go ahead and make another function here called update avatar so this is a function that will actually update avatar and make the api call and we can get the update avatar function here and just uh, do on submit and just like when this button is clicked then we're gonna run this update avatar function so let's go to the button here and do on click equals to update avatar so uh, a quick recap is whenever you change the file in this input it's just gonna set the file into this uh, into this file state variable and then once you're actually done and you you've changed and you're ready to submit and you click this button it's gonna it's gonna call this update avatar function which we have to write and it's gonna take this file and push that to the firebase storage and then we're gonna have a loading state from this because um, uploading files take some time it's an API call and that's why we have an uh, we have a loading state uh, I realize that it clashes with an existing is loading uh, so let's just rename this auth loading put that there and then here we'll just do um, file loading and just get the loading state from the use update avatar and we have to make that loading state loading state here as well so it's loading and then we have to const is loading set is loading and then now finally let's make this asynchronous function called update avatar i'm actually just going to change this to set loading instead of set is loading so that's shorter and the next thing i'm going to do is of course as always we're going to start the api call by setting loading to true and then false afterwards and then we're going to call a function called upload bytes and that's going to be imported from firebase slash storage and since it's an API call, we can await that. So upload bytes takes in two arguments. The first one is going to be the file reference, which is basically the position, the location in which we want to upload the file. And it contains information about the file's name and the file's uh, folder and stuff like that. And then the next is the actual file to upload. And this data object, we can just call it file because we have a state variable to store the file. I'm just going to put it there. And then all we have to do now is make that file a reference. And basically, we're going to use this reference function that we can import from uh, Firebase slash storage. So let's go ahead and make the reference. Uh, the first argument is going to be the storage handle, which we're going to import from um, our library slash Firebase. And note that we're no longer just doing DB here. We're doing storage this time because we aren't, we're not dealing with Cloud Firestore anymore. This time, we actually want to use the Firebase storage uh, API the SDK for Firebase storage and not just Cloud Firestore anymore because we're uploading files and we're not storing uh, data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name um, this file avatars slash whatever. So this is going to be the file name and this is going to be the folder. If I uh, just set the, the file name to the user's ID and that way we'll have a unique file name for every uh, file in the cloud storage. If you try to upload a file to a reference to a uh, to a file name that already exists, Firebase is gonna re, it's gonna overwrite that file. So you can't just store the file name here as it is. Because if two users upload um, dog.png, they're both the dog.png is gonna up overwrite the the file name inside of storage. So let's just use the user ID as the file name. Um, I'm gonna have to uh, import use. I'm gonna have to get the user ID from the arguments of the use update avatar hook. So we have to come here and pass in the user.id there. And there, that way we can just set the user ID as the file name. And then once the uploading is done, I'm just going to toast the user uh, just, just to let them know that uh, it succeeded. So we have to do const toast equals to use toast. I'm just going to copy the toast and just put it here. Profile updated and set loading to false. Um, so let's go ahead and refresh this now before we try to actually upload our, our file I just wanted to um, remind you guys that if this is the first time you're using the storage uh, SDK within your Firebase console you want to go to build and go to storage and there's gonna be a get start button there that you have to click I, I already did that off screen which means if you don't do that and you don't initialize the storage for the first time you're using it you're gonna run into an error and it's gonna crash uh, in the JavaScript console. 
So I'm going to select a file. Let's do um, any file and just click Save. It's going to tell us profile updated. And if we go to our storage console and just refresh that, we should be able to see um, that avatar's folder because we were trying to uh, upload a file to a folder that doesn't exist. Firebase just automatically creates that folder for us. Just click on that. And then we, there we see our image. And that's the image that we uploaded. And the file name is going to be uh, the equal to the user's ID. And another thing I want to do is I want to come here and try to upload an empty file. So if I don't select any file, it's going to say no file chosen and we can hit save and still going to work. It's going to let us through and it's going to say profile updated. And I just, I just want to see what happens here in Firebase console. Uh, so we're going to get a file that's corrupted and that isn't actually a file. It's going to be like a null file and then we just don't want to allow the user to upload files if uh, the file is empty, right? So let's go ahead and make a check for that. So when you click on update avatar, I'm gonna f before I even do anything, I'm gonna check if the file is null. So um, if not file, we are going to toast the user and tell them to select a file. So I have to copy the toast and put that here. And then to cut off all of these code uh, all of the other code from running I'm going to return make an early return statement which then stops this function and then these co this code here won't run so refresh this and change the avatar if I just select an, an empty file and just hit save it's going to tell us no fi no file selected and it's going to force us to select the file so um, we can select just any file just save that and it's going to say profile updated and we've we go to our console and refresh that we should be able to see the updated picture we have yes we have uploaded the file to the firebase storage bucket but we're not actually changing the so if i go to the, the firestore database we're not actually updating the user profile in here to reflect the change into the avatar field it's still an empty string so let's go ahead and do that within our hook so before we set uh, be, before we toast profile updated and set the loading to false, I'm first going to have to update doc. And I'm going to update doc and this is we're going to have to make a doc reference to the user the user profile of that specific user we're trying to update. I'm going to do await. And let's make that document reference. So it's going to be a doc, the database handle, users, and then the UID. And then we're going to update the document and we are just going to give a uh, an object that has avatar equal to the avatars URL so we can't just do avatar avatar avatars slash ID whatever because this isn't a valid link if um, you try to put this link into the source of uh, the, an image element in HTML it's gonna give it's gonna give uh, the, it's not gonna give you the image that you want so we have to somehow get that uh, download URL from Firebase now if you just went to the console and just went to the storage and just like click on the file that you want to download and just look at the file location you can just like just click on that and then this gives you the URL is firebase storage.googleapis.com slash whatever whatever and that, that whole string there so how do we get this string from within our app so there's this uh, there's this uh, method this function from firebase called get download url it's going to be an api call which means we have to await that and inside of this argument we're going to pass in the file reference uh, and then we can set this to file url uh, like download url or av just avatar url i guess and then we can just pass that here avatar url and then now if i try to change the avatar and I just like set um, the star here and I hit save it's gonna update our avatar and we can just hard refresh the page and we should see that the avatar is um, updated now I don't want to have to refresh the page to see it uh, the manually refresh the page so if you wanted to refresh the page using uh, react router you can um, use the use navigate hook so use navigate and then we just go to the bottom here and we just um, use navigate just navigate navigate zero and zero basically just refreshes the page so I can change the avatar again 
just change it to something else just hit save it's gonna save and refresh the page for us and you can see everything's updated and this feature i'm going to add to this change avatar modal is that i want to be able to preview the file that i'm uploading so uh, right now if I choose I chose a different uh, different file it's not going to show up here in the avatar and that's because in our avatar component we have hard-coded the source to come from the user the user's avatar property so what I can do here is when uh, when we have set the file to this file this react file variable I can just give back a file URL and it's gonna be uh, url.create object url and that's basically a built-in function inside of uh, javascript that will allow us to create a url that we can put into this source uh, prop as we are uh, previewing the avatar picture and we're going to pass in the file binary in there let's go to um, edit profile here and just take the file url from the hook and let's pass it into our avatar here so we could do like source equals to whatever there but it's not going to work because this is our custom avatar uh, component doesn't doesn't it's not listening for uh, a different prop so we can manually set a, a default avatar to be uh, default avatar prop to equal to null and say that um, if there's if the avatar is not null then we render then we re render this avatar override source otherwise we'll just uh, render the default uh, behavior which is just the user avatar so if we have an override we'll just use the override or you can just you can just name this override avatar just put that there and then um, we can just override the avatar with our source here file url and if i come back to to this web page we can see like create object url on url is uh it failed basically that's because um in here we we started off by setting null to our, our file object and url.create object url can't create a url for null type files so if we have to check if file is null if file is null then we just return null otherwise we're gonna uh, process it using this create object url method so we can refresh that it's not going to give us the error anymore we can change the avatar just like select this and you can see that updates and it shows us a, a small preview before we even uh, upload this to the firestore uh, database so we can hit save the f sorry i mean <laughs> I, I meant cloud fire uh, cloud storage so storage and firestore are totally different things storage is used to store uh, files and firestore is more like a database so uh, we can refresh this and just uh, see the changes so we're gonna see our file uploaded here in this avatar and pretty much we're done with our avatar changing feature here um, if I go to another user if I go to user 2121 and click on that you want we shouldn't be able to see this change avatar button here because we shouldn't be able we shouldn't be allowed to change someone else's avatar uh, so let me just see what went wrong here um, it's in index and then this button. All right, so this change avatar button should only appear if we are change, we are uh, looking at the profile of our current user. So let's get our current user here using uh, user. Let's rename that to auth user and this loading would be auth loading. Uh, so I'm gonna use auth and then. Um, if user loading, oh, all right. So it doesn't matter. Let's just let's just wrap this in curly braces and say, if um, not auth loading. So if auth is loading, then we just won't render anything here. And if auth is not loading, we're gonna check if the user, the auth user dot id is equal to um, the user dot id. And that user id is coming from that uh, variable there. And if that's true, then you just render the button. So the use the change avatar button should disappear. But if we added our own profile, we should see that button appear. Finally, let's work on this all users page. So right now, this page just returns an empty user string, which is uh, right here. This users path. If we look at example, this is what we want to get. We want to get. We want to map through each of the user and just make a grid and show all of the users. 
So uh, let's go ahead and make a component here called users. Then we have index.js here. And uh, I'm just going to copy and paste some code here. So basically, it's this is a very simple component. It's just a list of all of the users. We're going to have to make a hook called use users. It's going to return to us um, all of the users that are that exists in this users profile this user profile table uh, here so it's gonna just simply read every single one of the documents in this users collection and just return that to us um, and then it's gonna map through each of the individual user and return a user card so one box is one user card and we have to map through the entire users array to create all of the user boxes um, so let's go ahead and make that use users hook. But before I do that, I want to go at the route and replace this users string with the users component, which we have to import. So import users from components slash users. And then let's go to our hooks and the users hook here. I'm going to export function use users plural. We don't need an ID here, unlike use user, because we're getting an entire collection, which means we won't be requiring an ID because we're just fetching everyone anyway. So uh, I'm going to just const users is loading equals to use collection data. And then we're going to have to reference the collection here and uh, give the DB and the name of the collection, which is this users. And then let's just um, return users and is loading. So hopefully that works. And uh, we can just save this and for now I'm just going to comment this out and we're just going to just print out the user object um, and see if that works. Uh, probably not because uh, we can't resolve dot, dot slash user if to comment that out as well. So that's not a react uh, a valid react child. It's not a react child because this user is an object and uh, we can't that's not that's not a string so we can just use json.stringify and just stringify it and see this uh, th this list. So we have, we're going to list through every single one of the users and we're going to get the ID and the username and whatever. So that, that works. And you can just make this user card um, in dot slash user. So user.js. And I'm just going to take this and put it here. So basically what we're going to be doing in this component is we're going to get the user prop uh, which is this user here and then we're gonna just I don't know why I'm I, I put this loading here because we don't need we're not looking for an is loading prop so I'm just gonna get rid of that we're gonna have a vertical stack we're gonna have an avatar that takes in the user object and then we're, we're gonna have the username and then we're gonna make the profile the view profile link link it to the protected slash profile profile slash user ID and then we can change this to teal and then let's save that and there we go that's our functional users page I can refresh that and we can just go to anyone's profile here I can view the profile of new user 2 new user 2 doesn't have any posts yet if I go and all users and look at user 2121 we see that post we can view our own profile and we're gonna see all of our posts so uh, we now have the users route completed and the final thing we have to do right now is just go and implement the delete functionality I was talking uh, I don't know how long ago in the video so we can finally get to that and uh, finish up the project so I'm gonna head over to hooks and the posts file and in the use delete post hook I'm just gonna revisit this uh, this hook and just write the functionality for this delete post function so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna confirm with the user if they actually want to de delete this post. So I'm going to make a window.confirm. Are you sure you want to delete this post? So if I go and click on that, it says, are you sure you want to delete this post? And if I click cancel, it's going to be the, the res variable. That's going to be false. If I, if I clicked on e OK, it's, this res variable is going to be true. So let's just say if it's true, if the user really wanted to delete this post, first we set loading to true. And then at some point in the future, we're going to set it to false once we're done with all of the API calls. So there's two things we're going to want to do here. We're going to delete the post document uh, in the post collection. So we're going to delete the post document itself. And the next thing we're going to do is delete all of the associated comments uh, for that post. So we're going to do delete comments here as well. 
So deleting the post document is relatively easy. We can just await a delete doc. Uh, and if the import delete doc from Firebase slash Firestore takes in the document reference and the database handle, the collection name, and the ID which we're getting from the arguments of the parameter of the use delete post hook. And that's very easy because now we don't have to post document anymore and we just have to delete all of the comments. Now this is going to be slightly trickier because it requires us to uh, make an advanced query to search where the post ID equals to the this ID variable. So we're going to just um, um, we we have to like get all of the all of the common documents that are uh, associated to the post first before we can delete them. So I'm going to make a query here, and I'm going to query for the collection uh, in the comments collection, and then I'm going to do where the post ID is equal to the ID because in our comments and in in the documents of the comments collection we're going to have this post ID field so we're just saying oh where the post ID field equals to this ID up here and then once we have the query we're going to get all the documents and we have to get the documents before we can delete the documents because there's no way to directly delete documents using the where clause in a Firestore so I'm going to make a query snapshot equals to await get docs and then the query and the import get docs so this is going to give us a snapshot of all of the documents uh, and to delete uh, we're just going to use for each so we're going to do query snapshot for each and then we're going to um, make a function here to delete each document um, what i can do is just come up here and make a function um, async function delete um, delete comment then let's take in a doc a, a reference a document reference and then here we're just going to run delete doc mm, document uh, the reference uh, so let's just call this doc ref and then we can just uh, for each document reference uh, for each document we're gonna return we're gonna run we're gonna run delete comment and doc dot reference Okay, because if when we're doing query dot for each, we're looping through each of the individual documents in the query, and we're not actually looping through, through the documents reference. So we have to do document dot reference and pass that into this delete comments, this delete comment function. Or we could also just uh, we could also just do like make this asynchronous function and make it an arrow function instead, and just like delete doc and doc dot reference, and that way we don't have to create an additional function there, just all in one line. And um, so after we're done with all of that, I'm going to toast the user and tell them that their post has been deleted using checker UI's, checker UI's toast. So const toast equals to use toast. And we have to import use toast from checker UI and just uh, toast that, post deleted. So if I come here and I just uh, refresh the page, um, it's going to tell us use toast is neither uh, okay we have to import that let's import mm, yeah we, we have that imported and for some reason it's not oh yeah I have to take this and put it up here in outside of this delete post function I refresh that and let's delete if we say cancel it's not going to do anything if you said okay it's going to delete the post post deleted and the comments should all be gone so I'm going to delete all of these posts and check our Firestore database so we no longer have a single comment and we still have we're still gonna have one post and that post is gonna belong to let's see that that post is gonna belong to user 2121 but it doesn't have any comments see zero comments so uh, so right now we can see that we've successfully managed to remove all of the comments and all of the posts using our new and updated post uh, use delete post function. One last thing that I caught before um, we finished the entire project is I, I still notice a delete button here for someone else's post that isn't our test user's post and we don't want to display the button if that post is not our post. So we only want to be able to delete our own posts and not other people's posts. So uh, all you have to do to fix that is go to post and the actions component in the post and this is the delete this is the delete button right so uh, we have to 
we have to get our current user using use auth, which we already do. And then we're gonna get the UID from the post uh, data object. So this UID prop will tell us if the uh, what the user ID of the owner of this post is. And we're gonna check if this UID equals to the current user's uh, user.id. So what we can do is just wrap this in curly braces. Just do like, um, if we have to check if the, if, uh, if user is loading or not. So um, wait, yeah, if user is loading, if not user loading, as well as if, um, the user dot ID is equal to the UID. In that case, we're just gonna render this icon button. So we see the button disappear. It's pretty much the it's pretty much the same logic as the change the change avatar button logic that we had in our profile. Should be in should be profile and then uh, index.js so it's the same logic as this uh, this one here and uh, to render the change button the change avatar button um, conditionally we're just rendering the the delete button conditionally here as well um, so if we went and made a new post here you can see that our post is gonna have a delete icon but not somebody else's post and I'm just gonna check if the comments uh, have delete buttons yes they do and if I were to log out and log in with user2 at gmail.com and just click on this test users post here and look at the comments and yeah we don't have the delete button and someone else's comments only our own comments so everything's working great and I'm just gonna do one last check to see if everything works now that we have our fully functioning react app I'm gonna show you how to deploy this app to an online hosting provider so I'm gonna go to VS code and just stop the server and just do yarn build and that's gonna generate a directory here uh, in just a second there we go that's our build directory and once this script is done we will just upload the files to hosting it looks like our app is done building so I'm gonna go to my hosting gear dashboard here and click on manage just right beside your uh, premium web hosting package so I'm gonna manage this package and just click on the file manager button there and we're gonna wait for that to load and then upload our, our files to the public HTML directory so there we have our default public HTML directory. We don't need that. We're going to replace that with our own files. So we can delete that. And then we can just upload our folder. And we're going to look for our build folder, which is right here. Just upload that and click upload. And it is really, really fast. Look, it's just done uploading. And I can just rename this to public HTML underscore HTML go to my domain and slash login we're gonna see that it's gonna give us the pages lost and that's because of the way react router is configured to work uh, we have to add like a dot ht access file inside of our public html folder here to make react router work with apache so i'm gonna make a new file here called dot ht access and i'm just gonna take this snippet and just paste it in here the snippet's gonna be in the video description as well as the github repository i'm just gonna hit save and this is where hosting really shines because we don't have to worry about restarting any servers or refreshing the server after making a change and we can just go to the page and just hard refresh that and you can see that it's instantly live and instantly refresh here we have our fully functional app that we can just sign it into so test user just password and it works and we have our SSL certificate we have this entire thing working in our domain and our uh, console just works I can just go and inspect and just see that there are no errors in the console and we can uh, we can edit the profile we can go click on all users and we just do whatever we want here and just log out again and guys that's it from me I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one